Having a great day because today I have a story of probably the most spoiled brat I have ever told on the channel and I've told plenty of spoiled brat stories on this channel but this kid might be the most spoiled and the worst so yeah sit back relax subscribe if you're new and we're gonna call today's subscriber who submitted the story we're gonna call him Lucas so this all started one day when Lucas was in seventh grade and he was riding the bus and it was the first day of school so you know he knew everyone in school you know they've been going to the same school for like the last six years or whatever and Lucas was on the bus with his friend uh, you know they were talking about you know they were excited for the beginning of seventh grade they were excited to see their new teachers to see everything to basically they were excited to start the new school year and so they pull up and you know they're walking out and that's when they see this car pull up it is a black Mercedes car. It is like one of the fancier models. Probably goes for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Lucas doesn't know this at the time, but Lucas knows that this is a nice car. So this really, really fancy, expensive car pulls up. And, you know, the, the door opens and this kid walks out. And it's this kid that Lucas doesn't recognize. And it's because this kid is new to the school. And so this kid walks out. He's in these, like, newly pressed linen shirt. He has these, like, pants on. He's got, like, a really slick backpack. His haircut is, like, pristine. He's got new, like, whatever, super fancy shoes on or whatever. And he walks out and he walks into school. So Lucas, you know, his first class period is English and he sits down and, you know, the teacher's like, hey, everyone, welcome back from summer. I just want to quickly introduce our new student. And they point to the student and says, hey, can you introduce yourself? And so the student stands up and says, hey, everyone, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm new to this town. Uh, I used to live, you know, a couple, you know, a couple whatever uh, miles that way. But, you know, my mom had to move because my dad had a super sick job that just had us forced us to move. And, yeah. I'm going to be with you guys for the rest for the next couple of years. So, uh, yeah, my name's uh, Ben. Nice to meet you guys. And, yeah. And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, that was great. And Ben sits down. And Lucas, who's in this class, is kind of just thinking to himself, okay, well, this kid sounds like kind of like a jerk, but maybe he just had a really bad first impression. I'm not going to judge him on that. So anyways, they're wait, uh, school, you know, the school bell rings and they go outside and they're kind of waiting to be picked up. So Lucas is picked up on the bus, which the bus comes like 10 minutes after school. And Ben is waiting for his super like sick Mercedes car or whatever to pull up. And so Ben actually approaches Lucas. And he's like, what's good, man? And Lucas is like, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the school. How's your stay been, basically? And, you know, Ben's like, it's all right here. It's all right. Uh, he said, and then Ben's like, so... What car are you being picked up in? And Lucas was like, uh, well, I don't, I don't actually get picked up. I, I ride the bus. And Ben's like, what? Uh, okay, well, uh, what car does your mom drive? And, you know, Lucas, he doesn't know, but it's not the most expensive car ever because, you know, his family's, his family's not doing so hot right now financially. It's things like this happen. So he's like, uh, I don't know. And Lucas is like, you don't know? Well, it can't be a good car if you don't know. My mom is driving a Mercedes S-Class, or I don't know. I, I'm not into cars. But anyway, she's driving, like, $200,000 Mercedes. It's about to pull up. Oh, there she is right now. And sure enough, the super fancy car pulls up, and the door opens, and, like, this kind of, like, blonde woman with probably about $100,000 worth of plastic surgery and these, like, big, really big black sunglasses leans out the, you know, the, uh, the driver's side uh, seat and, like, looks out the window. It's like, Ben, oh, hey there, and looks at Lucas, and Lucas kind of waves timidly. She's like, Ben, you've already made new friends. Oh, ben, this is so great. And Ben's like, whatever, Mom. Bye, dude. And Ben gets in the car, and they drive off. And another kid, one of Lucas's friends, walks up to Lucas after Ben and his mom drive away, and his one of uh, and Lucas's friend is like, "Dude, that guy's kind of a jerk." And Lucas is like, "Yeah, um, he kind of asked me what car my mom drove, and then when I said I don't know, he says, well, it's probably a poor car, <laughs> if you don't know.' And then he said how much his parents' cars car cost, and then he got in and he drove away. And Lucas's friend's like, "Yeah, this guy's a this guy's a." This guy's a pee-pee. Uh, they're in seventh grade, man. Maybe they said something worse, but I don't know. I'm trying to keep ads in this video. YouTube, don't thunderbolt me, please. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around, 
And Lucas is kind of like, all right, well, me and Ben, we're not going to be boys. We're not going to be super tight. We're not going to be hanging out that much. But you know what? Fine. He can exist. I can exist. We will coexist, right? We just won't interact with each other that much. And that is totally okay. So they go to lunch and they're sitting down. And Lucas is sitting with some of his friends. However, this is a pretty big table so that there's a lot of open seats. And Ben walks in, and Ben kind of has a posse of kids behind him. Ben kind of has this like aura, like this aura of confidence, and people know that you know he's got a lot of money too. So for some reason, that just immediately made him popular. So Ben was walking in, and imagine him strutting in. So he's got his chest out, his arms are kind of waving back and forth a little bit. Ben is strutting into the cafeteria with his like army of little minions behind him, and Lucas looks over. He's like, "What?" and Almost every other table was full, so Ben and his minions, I'm going to call them that, Ben and his minions, they sit down at the table, and they're all, they already start talking, and Lucas and his friends were talking about how much they didn't like Ben, but were just going to like, whatever. So it's kind of like, they all kind of look at each other when Ben and his friends sit down. They're all kind of like, uh, okay. So anyways, right, you know, Ben looks over and says, what do you boys have for lunch today? And, you know, they open it up, and... Uh, I, Lucas has like, well, I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And Ben was like, uh, I mean, nice dude. And Lucas was in his mind. He's like, dude, why? Why Why are you scoffing at that? Like, bro, are, are you serious? Are you serious? And, Lu- and Ben was like, yeah, I got pretty standard lunch today. I got some leftover sushi from last night and also some cold cuts my dad made me on his grill. Do you want to hear about my dad's grill? It went for $5,000. At this point, you know, Lucas is just like, he's zoning out the conversation. He's trying to turn back to his friends because it's Lucas and his friends and Ben and his minions. They're all sitting at that table. So Lucas is kind of hoping that Ben will start talking primarily to his minions and Lucas can talk, go back and talk to his friends, right? But Ben is not letting that happen because Ben turns around again and says, So, Lucas, tell me about you. What do your parents do for work? Which, first of all, when you say, tell me about you, I, don't you want to know about them? Why does it matter what their parents do for work, bro? But but anyways, right? Lucas is kind of like taken aback. He's like, well, um, I, I don't know. My my dad, uh, my dad, you know, he 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 works a couple jobs. Um, and Lucas is like, what jobs are those? Or Ben is like, what jobs are those, Lucas? And uh, Lucas is like, um. Well, I mean, he just works a couple. I mean, he works at this movie theater. And Ben is like, oh, is he the manager? Does he own it? And Lucas is like, no. He just works a concession. But he also works another job. And Lucas and Ben is like, oh. So he's like one of those uh, minimum wage guys. Okay. And Lucas is starting to get a little bit upset because, you know, he doesn't get to see his dad that often. The reason why he doesn't get to see his dad that often is because dad is putting in the work. He's trying to support for his family. Want to make sure that Lucas, you know, has all the amenities he na- needs to grow up nicely right before he set off into the world. So Lucas is a little bit upset. So he doesn't ask back. He's trying to end this conversation. And Ben's like, oh, do you want to know what my parents do? Okay, I'll tell you anyways. So my dad, my dad, uh, I'm going to call him dad. So my daddy, oh, he... He's a lawyer, but he's not your standard, like, broke-ass lawyer. He's really good. He's really good. And Lucas is like, don't care, don't care. I just don't care. But all in his head, right? He doesn't want to say this. He's not trying to be a jerk explicitly. And Ben is like, yeah, he makes a lot of money. And he has a lot of crazy clients, like, all oh, those big oil companies and tobacco companies. He's, like, the number one for them. And Lucas and his friends kind of look at each other like, um... Why, 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 are we, why are we outing ourselves as the villain here? Come on now. <laughs> um, but anyways, you know, Ben is like, yeah, my mom, she's just a housewife. So useless, dude. And, and Lucas is just looking at his friends like, did you just call your mom useless, bro? Who raised you? Let's hope it wasn't her. What? Huh? Well, what's going on? And so Lucas and his friends, Lucas is like, oh, I got I to gotta go. And Ben's like, why? Uh, dinner's and done. Oh, lunch isn't over yet. And, you know, Ben's just like, um, well, I, I got to get prepared for a test. And all of his friends were like, yeah, we're in the same class. We got to prepare too. And Ben's like, all right, cool. And so sure enough, um, you know, uh, uh, Lucas and his friends, they get up. They walk out of there. Lucas and his friends don't have a test to prepare for. 
They just want to get out of there. So sure enough, Lucas and his friends are walking out, and they're just like, they start talking to each other once they're out of, like, you know, earshot. They're like, oh, my God, I knew that guy sucked, but that guy really sucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> they, were basically, they, they, were dumb, they were dumbfounded. They had no idea just what happened. They have no idea how to comprehend the conversation they just had. So Lucas and his friends are like, all right, we're going to have to coexist with this guy. We, we somehow, you know what, as long as we don't have a class with him, we'll be fine. And that's when they figured out that he actually moved classes. And the next day, Lucas realized that he had a class with Ben. Wait. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. I'm going to try and hard a bunch of comments to say spoiled, just to say thank you for just supporting the channel. And also, if you want to support the channel even more, sit down and watch a bunch of videos in a row, basically binge watch these videos, and let me know in the comment section how you're doing this, if you're watching them to go to sleep, if you're playing video games, if you're drawing art, if you're animating, if you're I don't know, mining Bitcoin, whatever you're doing in the background, right? Let me know in the comment section and I'll be putting random comments shouting out people who are supporting the channel like these people. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back to the story. This might be the most craziest spoiled kid story I've ever told. So Lucas and his friends asked if they were leaving the lunchroom after what just happened, which was crazy. They were like, you know what? At least we don't have a class with him. Two days later, Lucas is sitting in his, last, in his math class. He gets there a little bit early. And the, the worst sight, the worst, the worst visual to cross his eyes ever happened because the door opened and Ben walked through. And Lucas was so confused, but that's when he remembered it was early on enough in the school year that people can switch math classes. And uh, Ben was in the kind of the, the, the least advanced math class. You know how in some schools they have like accelerated kind of standard and then the subpar out dude i was in the subpar one sometimes sometimes so i'm not saying that as a diss i've been there but anyways right uh lucas realizes that you know ben was probably self-placed himself in super advanced and then just fell down two rungs of math classes and eventually ended up here and lucas was like oh no 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 no, 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 this can't be, this can't be. It's like when Michael Scott saw that Toby returned. No. Anyways, though, Lucas is like, all right, fine. It's math class. It's not like we're going to be collaborating a ton. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to perform well in the tests. I'm going to ignore this Ben kid. I hate this kid. We are not talking. And that's it. So about a week later, the math teacher assigned random partners to do a big math project. Lucas was like, a project in math class? And the partners are randomized? Okay, well, what are the odds that I get Ben? Sure enough, the teacher goes in and puts all the names into a random, like, name pair generator website. He's like, all right, first pair, Lucas and Ben. Lucas was just like, God, I know you are testing me, but what have I done? <laughs> Why? What have I done? A anyways, right, Lucas is like, all right, I have to do it with Ben. That is fine. And the teacher's like, all right, probably for this project, the best thing you can do is to work together on the weekends. And, you know, Luke's like, and I have to go to Ben's house now. Oh, my God. So sure enough, Ben goes, it comes over. He's like, what's up, bro? Let me get your number. And, you know, Lucas pulls out, you know, his, his phone. And Ben's like, bro, what generation is that? Is that like an iPhone Zero? Lol. This is the, this is the newest iPhone ever. It actually has the most storage possible. And, you know, Lucas is like, that's nice, Ben. That's nice. Ben's like, oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to what you said. What's your number again? So Lucas, you know, gives Ben his number. They contact each other. And apparently Ben actually lives like a 10-minute walk. And Lucas is like, fine, I'm just, I'm just going to walk there, whatever. I don't even want my parents, like, I don't want my mom interacting with his mom. I don't want them to become friends. I want none of this. So on a Saturday, he gets up and he walks 10 minutes down. And he can literally feel the neighborhood getting nicer and nicer with every step he takes. It's ridiculous. He's like, well, so this is apparently the nice part of town. Good to know I live in the bad part. What a lovely day. So Lucas keeps walking over. And eventually, you know, he's getting, he sees this really big, fancy house at the very end of the street. And he's like, well, I don't even have to check my maps. I know for a fact this is, this is Ben's house. So he gets, he walks over and he gets there and he rings the doorbell and he just kind of looks around. It's the most extravagant, exquisite house you have ever seen. It's like the most lavish, 
insert adjectives of money, basically, right? And uh, sure enough, you know, the door opens and it's, you know, it's Ben's mom, you know, with a ten hundred thousand dollars of plastic surgery, the super, the, 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 still has the sunglasses on inside for some reason, has the big long blonde hair. And she's like, oh, Ben, oh, oh, Lucas, I'm so excited for you to come here. Ben, Ben, your friend is here. Shut up, mom. Ben! So anyways, after a bit of yelling, Ben eventually comes down. It's like, what's up? Let's just crank this math out, dude. Let's get it done with. And so Lucas is like, all right. So they head downstairs to Ben's basement, which the basement is not like a standard basement, which is like wet and cold. It's like fancy and everything. It's great. Got like a thousand flat screen TVs, bars of literal solid gold. Um, maybe. Maybe is like an alternative investment, but... They go down there, and there's this table. So Lucas has his backpack. He whips out his backpack, and he's like, all right, let's work on this project. And Ben's like, so how much do I need to, how much do I need to pay you to do the whole project for me? And Lucas is like, what? And Ben's like, yeah, can I, can I give you, like, $5? That's, like, a ton for you, right? Like, wouldn't $5 just, like, get a whole year's worth of rice and beans for your family to eat, right? And Lucas is like, he is barely keeping it in at this point. He's like, this might be the most insufferable kid I have ever met. And Ben's like, yeah. What, what, what do you want, $6 or something? Seven? Oh, my God. Seven must be crazy. Have you ever, have you ever even seen seven whole dollars in your entire life? I don't think so. At this point, Luke is like, no way. No, 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 no. This, this is not how it goes. This is not how it's going, right? No, no, no. No. This is not, this is not what's happening. Lucas is like, Ben, it would be a violation of the honor code for me to do all the work. He said, it's not going to be hard. Just sit down and do it for me. Ben's like, uh, uh, fine, I'll do it. Fine, Ben, or fine, Lucas, whatever, dude. And so sure enough, they sit down, and, you know, Ben's like, you know what, I'm actually not going to do this. I'm going to go play some video games. But my mom knows that I have a project, so you had to come over. And just don't tell her anything. Um, yeah. So if you want to fail this, go ahead and do nothing, right? I don't care about my grades, right? I don't care about my grades. Which Ben was kind of bluffing here. But Ben was like, I don't care, right? But I'm not going to do anything. And if you don't do anything, then both of us are getting an F. And I know that grades matter to you, buddy. So either you do something and we both do well, or you don't do anything and we both fail. I feel like it's a pretty, <laughs> I feel like it's pretty, pretty obvious answer here. And Lucas was like, this kid isn't just a jerk. He's evil, right? What? So sure enough, Lucas is like, no. In his head, he's like, you're not getting away with this. I might do this. I'm going to do the work, but you're not getting away with this. So Lucas just sits down at the table and says, fine, Ben. You drive a hard bargain, but fair enough. Th don't worry. Lucas did not concede here. This is not the end of it. Don't worry. So Lucas sits down, and after, like, grinding away for hours, he eventually finishes the project. And Ben, the whole time, is playing, like, on his Xbox. He's like, what? Are you done? Cool. See you later. See you tomorrow or see you on Monday in class, buddy. And Lucas gets his stuff. He's like, bye, Ben. Puts his stuff together. Ben's mom's like, oh, come back soon. I, if you want. And, you know, Lucas is like, aha, thank you. Thank you very much. Lucas walks out, and he's walking down all the way back to his house. The entire way back, he's like, this is not over. Ben did not win this round. He won, the, he won this battle, but I will win the war here. But exactly how was going to be the hard part? Because Lucas knew that Ben could lie. And, like, if Lucas, like, turned him in and said, hey, I did all the work here, Ben could simply say, oh, well, that's a lie. I did the work. Prove it. Prove it if I didn't, right? And it would be really hard. And Lucas was, like, dealing, was trying to figure that out until it came to him. Ben has no idea what the project is. He has no idea what the continents of, or what is inside of the project. He doesn't know anything about the project. And if Lucas was to turn him in, he would tell the teacher, and the way that you're going to prove it is you're going to ask Ben to say anything about the project. You're going to ask Ben to explain what he contributed to without showing him the project. 
Because Ben did nothing and he knows nothing. Ben might be able to weasel his way out if he actually sees the project being being like, oh, that's totally me. I totally did that part and that part and that part. In fact, I did all of it. Like, you know, he wouldn't be able to do that if he never saw the project. And Lucas starts skipping on the, he, he's so excited, he starts skipping on his way back home. He is just full of energy because he has gotten Ben at his own freaking game. So anyways, Monday comes in. And, you know, the teachers, like, at the end of class, the teacher's collecting projects. And Ben goes up with a project. And, you know, or Lucas goes up with a project. And Ben is, like, walks up as well and says, hey, teacher, look at this project. Isn't it so great? And the teacher's like, ah, good job, guys. And so Ben walks back to the, to kind of, like, walks away, goes to the back of the classroom again. And Lucas kind of, like, stays up there and whispers to the teacher, hey, uh, c- can you wait a second after c- c- can we talk after class for a second? The teacher's like, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever you want to do. And so when the bell rings, everyone leaves. And then, uh, you know, Lucas and the teacher are here. And Lucas says, hey. And Lucas explains everything that happens. He explains that Ben didn't do the work, but didn't just not do the work. He told him that, like, since he wasn't going to do the work, if he didn't want to fail, Ben ha- uh, Lucas had to do everything. And the teacher's like, wow, like, this is a really serious accusation. Like, not only will he, like, fail, but this is, like, this is part of, like, academic honesty because he said that this was his work. So Lucas says, okay, I know this is a big deal, but I, for you to prove it, just go up to Ben and tell him that, like, exactly what I'm saying and then tell him to prove that he did anything by explaining anything about the project. Anything about the project. I am so confident that he didn't do a single thing that if he gets, like, a single part of our presentation correct, besides the cover, then you know what? Fine. He's off the hook, and I'm wrong. Even though I'm not, but I'm wrong. He doesn't get punished. And the teacher's like, okay. I'm going to do it. And so he's like, all right, I'm actually going to go to the, I know exactly what class that uh, Ben is in right now. I'm going to go pull him out of it because this is serious enough. And uh, yeah, all right, Lucas, I will keep you updated. So anyways, Lucas goes to his next class and he's barely able, right? He's barely able to focus because the only thing he can think about right now is, oh my God, he's like not interrogating Ben, but he's trying to, he's like, he's asking Ben, is Ben going to like, did Ben actually, did, did Ben like, figure out something about the project. I really went on a limb saying he won't know anything. Like, what if he just knows one single thing? What if he looked over and just remembers something? Like, oh my God. And he's going to know that I ratted him out. He's going to make my life terrible if things, oh my God, like if this doesn't work. And so after this class ends, he's walking, Lucas is walking to his next class. And that's when he sees his math teacher walking by. And his math teacher is like, oh, Lucas, can I talk to you for a second? And Lucas's heart just drops because he knows that this, this right here, this is the moment. Like if something's going to happen, it's going to happen now. So Lucas walks over and they both walk over to like an empty classroom and they walk in. And the math teacher's like, hey, Lucas, so I just want to tell you, I talked with Ben and I told him what, what you said to me. And he denied everything. He denied every detail. And in fact, he said that you were the one who was slacking and knew that you were slacking and didn't put in equal work. So you wanted to cover it up. And you told him that, you know, that you were thinking of like lying or something like that. And Lucas is like, what? And the teacher's like, I I don't know. He explained it kind of weirdly. But at that point, it was a he said, she said. So it was a draw. And Lucas was like, no. And then the teacher's like, well, at that point, it was a draw, but then I decided that I was going to go along with your kind of theory of asking him to prove anything, which he said he did most of the work, so that wouldn't be a problem, right? And Lucas is like, correct, if he did stuff. And the teacher's like, okay, so yeah, and I went to him, and I asked him, I said, hey, tell me what you did in the project. And Ben replied, oh, let me see the project, and I'll point it out. And I told Ben that... No, I'm trying to test if you actually know anything about the project, because if you did it, you certainly should. And while Ben said a lot of words, and he made a lot of sounds, and he did a lot of movements, Ben didn't tell me one single thing about the project, and I realized that what you were saying was 100% accurate. Ben is not only failing this assignment, but, you know, we've sent him to the deans for, you know, plagiarism and academic honesty, and this will be pretty severe on his record. Thank Thank you for letting us know. And at this point, right, Lucas knew, Lucas knew that he won, finally, after all this work. But Lucas also knew another thing. Ben wasn't getting expelled. 
he wasn't getting kicked out. And while Lucas did a pretty big damaging blow, Ben would surely, surely return. And Ben would probably be worse than he's Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of a spoiled kid who gets so angry that he ends up burning down his entire summer camp. This may be the most insane story I have ever received, so sit back, relax, maybe grab something to eat, grab something to drink, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted this story Max. So this all happened one summer when Max was away at a day summer camp, so it wasn't a sleepaway camp, but it was a day camp that his mom would pick him up and drop him off every single day for a week. And this is a camp Max has been going to for a little while now. And so basically they would, you know, kids would be dropped off. They would do activities, kind of typical camp stuff. And anyways, on the first day, Max is dropped off and there's a bunch of kids over there and Max knows one guy and his name is Ben. Yes, Ben is not the bad guy in this situ in this story. Um, but anyways, Ben and Max have been friends for a while. They actually met at this camp like two years ago. And while they don't really live super close to each other, or they just don't really hang out that much. They always make it a thing to try and always go back to this camp at the same time. Their parents stay in contact or whatever. So anyways, Max goes up to Ben is like, hey man, it's been a while. And Ben's like, dude, it's been so long. So good to see you. And they're kind of just waiting while all the new campers come in and are starting to talk to each other. It's kind of like the introduction day where you're supposed to meet a bunch of people. And that's when they see this really fancy car pull up. It has, it's like one of those like black Mercedes with like the tinted windows and the door opens up and this kid walks out. And sometimes you just know like when someone walks with a certain energy, a certain strut, you already know that they're kind of like at least entitled a little bit. You can just kind of see it in the way that they walk. Well, Max and Ben right away could see that this kid, who we're just going to call the spoiled kid, you know, just the way this kid was walking, you could tell that he was up to no good and he kind of got everything he ever wanted. So sure enough, right, you know, the spoiled kid walks over and he's like kind of looking around and he's kind of just hanging out by himself. And at first Max and Ben kind of just assumed that, oh, you know, kid probably doesn't know anyone. Let's go over and try and to, you know, talk to him. Little did they know that the spoiled kid wasn't talking to anyone because he simply thought that he was better than everyone else. But anyways, Max and Ben walk over to spoiled kid. They're like... Hey man, like, how's it going? And the spoiled kid looks at them and is like, good. And Max and Ben are kind of like, hey, you know, we've been to this camp for a while. You're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm assuming this is your first year here as we don't, you know, we haven't recognized you, but if you have any questions, let us know. And the spoiled kid's like, okay. And Max and Ben at this point still, while they have a bit of a vibe from this kid that he's like, I don't know, being he's kind of spoiled or whatever, but these kids in the beginning, or Max and Ben kind of just assume, well, well, that's fine. He's probably just shy. He's probably just nervous. He doesn't know us, right? He doesn't need to be maxing our energy to be a good guy. You know, we're going to break through to this kid and he's probably going to be a great guy. Well, they were totally wrong with that sentiment, but it was a good sentiment. So anyways, right, the camp, after about like 10, 15 minutes, all the kids were dropped off. They were all checked in and the main camp counselor kind of like blew their whistle and said all right guys we're heading into the barn so basically there was a real there was like a barn where it wasn't like a like a i don't know it wasn't like a uh a farmer barn like where they had horses or something but it was kind of like a big open area and then attached to it was uh the rest of the building which had like a little art studio had a it was like kind of like a uh, it was a kind of a big building it wasn't like a massive like university building but it was a big enough building that you could have multiple you had like an art studio you had a big open area and there was also a pool that they would walk up to every day at least when the weather was good but we'll get to that later so they all walk into the barn area and the main camp counselor is like hey Hey guys, like, welcome to camp whatever, week two, and everyone's like, ah, whatever, you know, you know how that goes. And, and the camp counselor's like, okay, so we're just going to play a really quick game of, like, get to know you, so walk around, and whoever you see, go up to them and ask them what their favorite thing to do is. So Max and Ben, you know, they split up, and they start walking around, talking to a bunch of people, and that's when Max, you know, he sees someone, goes up to them, asks them, oh, what's your favorite thing to do? And they say, oh, I love to fish or whatever. And that's when Max sees the spoiled kid, and he sees the spoiled kid, who at this point he doesn't know is a spoiled kid. He still thinks that this might be a good kid and that, you know, he's a struggle. Max goes up to him and sees that he isn't really talking to other people or he's kind of like avoiding other people and you know other people are like well if he's avoiding me I'm not gonna like go out of my way but Max really does go out of his way to be like hey spoiled kid like spin a second and the spoiled kid's like hi and Max is like so what do you do in your free time and the spoiled kid is like well 
I polish my watch collection. And Max is like, oh, that's sick, man. Like, do you have any, like, I don't know, <laughs> what kind of, like, uh, what kind of cartoon watches do you have? Because, like, literally in Max's mind, because this was a little while ago, he was thinking of, like, you know, those novelty watches of, like, SpongeBob funny watches or whatever. And he's like, oh, wait, do you have, like, a Fitbit or something? And Spoil Kid is like, no, I don't have a Fitbit. I don't have a funny SpongeBob watch. I have a Rolex Aqua Racer or Submariner. You, you don't even understand what that is. And at the time, Max had no idea. He's like, no, I don't. And the spoiled kid's like, well, it's a very expensive watch, and I spend my time shining it. And Max is like, okay. Max keeps walking around, talking to other people. At this point, you might be thinking, dude, Max, obviously this kid is spoiled. He's not a good kid. But Max is kind of was like, well, that was a weird interaction, but... I don't know, he's probably just nervous. At a certain point, you can't say that every interaction of someone being a jerk is them being nervous, but anyways, right, you know, Max is a good kid giving him the benefit of the doubt. So anyways, you know, they have lunch and Max and Ben are sitting around, they're excited for the week to happen, and they're talking a little bit about the spoiled kid, and they're like, I feel bad for that kid, like, he's not, he seems really nervous, he seems like he's not, like, trying to make friends, and they're like, you know what, while we shouldn't spend our entire time trying to, like, break through to him because we only got a week and we want to have fun here, let's still continue to try, at least today. So anyways, right after lunch, they go up to the pool, and, you know, at this point, this is where they start to realize how evil or how truly spoiled the spoiled kid is. So sure enough, they go up to the pool, and the way that the pool works is there's, like, one really big pool, and they go in shifts of, like, 15 kids or whatever, because while it's a big pool, there's, like, 50 kids at the camp, or maybe they go in shifts of, like, I don't know, 20 or something. I, I don't know. It, it breaks up into about four groups or so, and there's about 60, 50 or so kids there. And so the spoiled kid, Max and Ben, were all all happened to be randomly in the same group, and they were in group two. So Max and Ben were talking, and they were watching as the spoiled kid, like, because there were bars around the pool. It was an outdoor pool. So there were not bars, but there was, like, a fence, and you could see through the fence. And, the, and Max and Ben looked over, and they saw the spoiled kid with, like, both of his arms on, like, both of his hands on, like, the fence, kind of rattling it, almost like, you know, in the movies when someone's in prison and they rattle the prison bars or whatever. And Max and Ben go up to him. They were like, dude, what's going on? And the spoiled kid's like, I want to go in the pool. And Max and Ben are like, yeah, dude, well, we're about to go in in, like, five minutes or so. We're in group two. And the spoiled kid rattles the, like, starts rattling the fence again. He's like, boom, 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 boom. He's like, I want to go in now. And Max and Ben kind of look at each other like, uh, that's not a normal response, right? Like, like that's not how people normally respond to things, correct? Like, I'm not just going crazy. That isn't a normal person response. Right? And they kind of just look at each other like, uh, what's, what's going on here? And this, and they're like, you know what? Uh, well, we're gonna, we're all going in pretty soon. Like, there's no need to, like, overreact or anything. And the spoiled kid just gives them, like, a dirty look. And then goes back to, like, rattling on the, on the gate bars or whatever. And when Max and Ben, like, walk away, a camp counselor actually walks over, goes up to the spoiled kid. And while Max can't hear exactly what the camp counselor says, it's pretty clear that the camp counselor was like, like, bro, you can't be doing this. You're going to be on in like five minutes. Just wait over there. So the spoiled kid walks over, stands in a corner, crosses his arms, and is all angry. And Max and Ben retreat. Or they don't retreat, but they go back to where they were standing before. And they, you know, Ben's like, dude, that kid's kind of weird. And Max is like, well, yeah, he's not as cool as I thought he would be. And Ben's like, dude, what? Like, why was he being so weird about not being able to swim? And Max is like, well, maybe he really likes to swim. And Ben's like, dude, you really think that? And, and Max is like, I don't know, man. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe the kid's having a tough first day. And sure enough, group two is called in. So Max, Ben, and all those kids, you know, they're in their bathing suits. They run over, and they all kind of, like, put their towels down, and they start to slide into the pool. And the spoiled kid, in his mind, is probably like, it's pool time, and I don't get the pool to myself? This will not do. So anyways, the spoiled kid jumps into the pool, and then, this is kind of crazy, he immediately starts peeing in the pool. So you just see this big yellow cloud start to, like, form around the kid, and all the other kids are like, ew, oh my god, bleh, and they all start to run out of it. And some of the counselors are like, what? So they start to run over. And the spoiled kid is literally just sitting in a big 
pee puddle in the pool, and they start swimming around in it. And Max and Ben are like, oh, what? Because Max and Ben have not even jumped in the pool yet. They're literally just, like, waiting to jump in. And then Max and Ben look at each other and are like, huh, what? <laughs> what? 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 And at this point, right, you know, the camp counselor walks up and is like, oh, buddy, did you have an accident? And, you know, the spoiled kid's like, what? Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Or whatever. And, you know, they're like, well, buddy, you should probably get out of there. And the spoiled kid's like, no, I like it in here. And that's when Ben turns to Max and is like, wait a minute. Do you think that that was on purpose? And Max is like, bro, what do you mean? He's like, well, he was complaining about not being in the pool and he didn't like the look of it when everyone else jumped in. And then he peed everywhere, and he's staying in the pool. He's doing laps right now. And so sure enough, right, you know, camp counselors are like, buddy, you should really get out of the pool. And there's like 10 minutes left, and like, there's like, they're bringing over the decontamination kits or whatever. And he's like, no, I like the pool all to myself. And at this point, Max is like, wait. This kid did pee in the pool to get it all to himself. So basically what happened was the spoiled kid saw all these other kids getting into the pool, was like, I want this pool to myself because whenever I want something, I get it, and decided to literally urinate in the pool to get what he wanted, which is ridiculous, but he did it. So sure enough, and I mean, this is like the least, this is not the most ridiculous thing. As you can tell by the title of the video, it gets much crazier. But this is the beginning of when Ben and Max start to realize that this kid is just not a good kid and that he's basically just bad news. So sure enough, right, uh, the rest of the kids can't go into the pool. So basically group three, four, and I think there's a group five, they just all were told, sorry guys, you're going to have to do field games. And they're like, what? And most of them didn't realize that the reason was was because uh, you know, the spoiled kid literally just peed up the entire pool. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing ever. He peed up the entire pool, man, and he was just swimming around in it. And Max and Ben were like, all right, so we're not going to go out of our way to hang out with this kid. So anyways, the first day ended, and, you know, Max's mom picked him up and said, hey, like, how was your first day? I know how much you love this camp. And Max tells her the story of this kid. She's like, wow, this is a very strange kid. And Max is like, yeah, well, I think this is probably it for him. And let me just say... That was not it for him. So the next day comes around, and when Max wakes up, it is pouring rain. His mom says, hey, honey, like, I just want to let you know it is pouring rain, so you will probably not be doing any outdoor activities or going in the pool today. So Max is dropped off at camp, and sure enough, they're having all their activities inside. And the first, like, activity, whatever, was some kind of, like, arts and craft thing. It was just Max and Ben chilling, hanging out, having a good time. But after that, you know, it was lunch. And normally, like, lunch isn't, you know, it, it's pretty standard. Normally, we'd think, oh, what happens at lunch? But basically, right, you know, there's kind of like a f five minutes before lunch started, you know, everyone has their lunch boxes. Basically, you bring a little container with all your lunch in, and you put your lunch box on, like, a bench or something. So there's, like, 50 lunch boxes, and, you know, Max and Ben, they walk out of their arts and craft class, and they go to their, uh, their lunch boxes, and they open it up and, you know, they go to it and they say, wait a minute, this has already been opened up. And Max turns to Ben and is like, bro, did, is yours opened up? And Ben's like, dude, mine's opened up too. And that's when they see that everybody's lunchbox has already been opened up. So like everyone's lunchbox has been unzipped. And, you know, Max is like, bro, where did my cookie go? And Ben's like, dude, where did my pudding cup go? And you start hearing murmurs from everyone else. Basically, they're missing one or two things, but they're normally missing the best part of their lunch. And that's when they hear this kind of crunching and munching noise, right? And they, and you know, so someone like walks to like the corner and they see that because there's like a curtain, because there's like a stage in the barn and they like hear noise behind the curtain and they draw the curtain and they see the spoiled kid sitting there with basically, basically a mountain of like dessert items from everyone's lunch. And at this point, right, the camp counselors are getting so many, like, complaints about someone opened up my lunchbox and took something. And that's when they noticed uh, basically the spoiled kid with a massive pile of all the, uh, basically all the, um, all the complaint, uh, complaints of all the food that was missing. So, you know, the, immediately Max and Ben are like, oh, my God, 
The spoiled kid must have, like, left Arts and Crafts early, went through everyone's lunchboxes, and just took all the good stuff and started eating it. So sure enough, right, you know, the camp counselors are like, you're coming with us. They take the spoiled kid out of there, and they kind of reprimand him in the hall, and everyone else runs over to the big pile, and they're kind of, like, going through their stuff. And about half the stuff has already been eaten, so half the kids are able to retrieve their, you know, their missing, uh, their missing dessert items, while the other half are just left with wrappers and, you know, spoons and used pudding cups. Yep, Rip Ben, his pudding cup is gone. R.I.P. pudding cup, you know, you'll live another day or something like that. And so sure enough, Ben and Max are sitting down eating their lunch, and ben Max also lost his, like, cookie thing or whatever dessert thing he had. So he's pretty upset as well. He's like, dude, this Ben kid sucks. And they're like, yeah, you know, I and Ben was, or not Ben kid, this spoiled kid sucks. Ben's like, yeah, I kind of got a feeling that he was a little weird when he decided to pee in the pool to have it all to himself. But this is like, this is overkill. And this is the least to what he does. As you guys know by the title, this only gets more and more insane. Real quick, comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. I just want to see how many people made it this far. And then also, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is maybe after this video or maybe later in the day when you're playing a video game, cleaning your room, drawing an art project, animating, trying to go to sleep, just literally binge watch a bunch of these videos. Watch like two, three, four, five of these videos in a row and let me know in the comment section, you know, how many of these videos you're watching, what you're doing while you're watching them. I will try and heart the comments and reply to say thank you because it really does help support the channel. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone watching right now. Even if you this is your first video or if you watched like 30 of my videos in the last 24 hours, every bit of like every minute watched helps me out so much. Anyways, let's get back to the story because it only gets crazier from this point on. You might be thinking, wow, this kid's spoiled. This kid is not just spoiled. He is insane from this point on. Also, you might be noticing that the gameplay is no longer looped on the really long videos like these, and it's because I just upgraded my setup. I got a, like, I do my videos on my phone, so I got a better phone with more storage. So no longer will you have to watch the same gameplay three times. I'm sorry, I literally had no space on my phone. I had a very budget setup, but now you get new gameplay for every minute you watch. Anyways, so Max and Ben were sitting there and they're like, oh my God, this kid's actually the worst, right? So later, you know, so later that day, you know, uh, they, they see the spoiled kid is back and there's a three strike system at this camp. The very first day, I didn't go over this, but basically they said, welcome everyone to camp, whatever. They went over the rules and then they also explained their three strike system. Basically, if there's kind of a major violation or you basically, you just break one of their rules, you get two strikes and then on your third strike, you're sent home you're not allowed to come back. There's no like tuition refund or anything like that. You're just you're just done, right? So basically, Max and Ben are pretty sure that the kid just got a strike. In fact, you know, the spoiled kid probably should have got a strike for like peeing in the pool, but like they didn't know that he did it on purpose, even though the spoiled kid very clearly did it on purpose just to get, you know, the pool all to himself. But right now, the spoiled kid was sitting with one strike, and he was not happy about it. The next day rolls around, and, you know, sure enough, uh, it is, it's a nice day. They're able to go outside. They're able to go to the pool. And in the morning activity, they actually have a big kind of, like, tag game. So it's a massive game of tag, and uh, Ben is actually it, and Max is not it. So Ben and a few other kids are designated as it, and basically you run around, and when you tag someone in this game, they also become it as well, so they can tag people too. It's like the zombie variation of tag, so like there's this, it basically gets to a point where like the, the numbers start growing exponentially, and then boom, everyone's done. So it's a pretty fun game, and the rounds are also fairly quick, and they did it so that more people could start as being it, more people could, you know, or and the other people that were it before could, like, be normal runners in the game as well. So sure enough, you know, Matt or Ben is kind of running around. He's getting people. And Ben eventually finds Max and kind of runs him down and gets him. So Max and Ben are kind of in a team right now trying to find people hiding because you can hide in this game too. And, you know, trying to find them, tag them down, get more people to the tag side. And that's when they see the spoiled kid. And Ben's like, you know what? For taking my pudding cup yesterday, this is going to be revenge. And Ben was a very fast kid. And the spoiled kid, uh, I'm not going to make any comments about his appearance, but let me just say that he was not very athletic at all. And it definitely, uh, it definitely was conveyed through the way that he wasn't able to run, basically, at all. So, yeah, Ben was easily, easily caught up with him. Ben easily caught up with him, got to him, 
tagged him, and not just Ben, Max, and a few other kids saw him be tagged, right? A lot of kids saw him get tagged, and the spoiled kid's like, you didn't get me, I dodged it. And, and Ben was like, dude, I, I clearly got you. And then Ben tagged him again. He's like, oh, I dodged that too. He did not dodge it, by the way. He was like, very clearly made contact. So that's when Ben like put two hands on this kid's shoulder and was like, tell me you're dodging this. And the kid like brushed him off and was like, I dodged. And then the kid starts to like waddle away. And you know, Ben turns to Max and is like, oh my God. So at this point, Max and Ben both tag him. And he's like, I dodged both of your tags. You can't get me, guys. And that's when one of the camp counselors sees what's going on. And he's like, hey, you know, why are you still running, kid? And the spoiled kid's like, uh, Mr. Counselor, I dodged all of their tags. And the counselor's like, that's not what I saw. And then Ben tagged him again. He's like, I got you. And the spoiled kid's like, Counselor, Counselor, did you see? I dodged that too. And the camp counselor's like, no, no, you, you got tagged, man. Like, it's fun. It's fun being it. Trust me. It's fun being it. You don't have to keep running. And the spoiled kid turns to all of them, all of them and said, you will regret cheating. You will regret cheating. And he starts, like, running away. And Ben and Max look at each other like, bro, what? And so sure enough, right, you know, there's another kid, you know, that was running with them. And so it's Ben, Max, and a third kid that are running. And so, yeah, so the three of them are running around. And that's when the spoiled kid comes up behind them. And he pushes Max and Ben over. He goes up behind them and does a massive push. They both fall over. And they watch as a spoiled kid turns around and kicks the third kid in the shin. And the kid's like, ah! He falls down. The kid starts crying or whatever. And one of the camp counselors saw the entire thing go down. He's like, hey, you, what did you just do? The spoiled kid says, they just all tripped. And, you know, the counselor's like, hey, I know you. You're the kid who, like, ate all the food yesterday. And, like, no, they did not trip. They're like, I saw the whole thing go down. You push those two kids, and then you kick that kid, and he's hurt. In fact, I think they're all hurt. You're coming with me. And he, like, takes out his phone. And he calls another counselor. He's like, hey, I need backup or something like that. And so another counselor comes over, assists, like, medically with, like, Ben, Max, and the third kid. Ben and Max were fine. They had some scrapes. But the third kid got some damage. Like, he didn't break anything, but he was in a lot of pain or whatever. And so the spoiled kid, once again, was taken away. And that means that he was now on two strikes. And he was very angry that he was on two strikes. Because two strikes means you're one strike away from being kicked out of the camp. But also, when you're on two strikes, you're, you have a lot of your privileges kind of revoked. For example, the spoiled kid was no longer allowed to go swimming. However, he had to go up to the swimming place. He just had to sit there and watch the other, other kids swim. Because they weren't going to have a counselor stay just to guard, like, the one kid. But they also didn't want to reward him with swimming if he's been terrible for, like, if he has two strikes, you have to be pretty bad to have two strikes. So anyways, that day, up at swimming, uh, Ben and Max are waiting around for, you know, their group to be called. And the spoiled kid, he's just standing there, and he is very angry. And, he, and you know, he goes up to Ben and Max. He's like, you two are cheating today. You two were cheating today, and all I did was I got revenge for your cheating. And because of that, I'm being blamed. And Ben and Max were like, yeah, you're blamed for, first of all, first of all, Ben's like, we were not cheating. We touched you a billion times, and you said that you dodged it. Explain how you dodged that, because you did not. One of the camp counselors saw the whole thing and even proved that you, in fact, were cheating. And then you decided, after running off and crying, because you're a little baby boy, and at this point, like, ben, Max is like, bro, Ben's going off, because you're a little baby boy, right? And you decided to come around and, and push us and then kick that guy in the shin because you can't handle losing because you're a loser? At this point, Max is like, I, or not Max, the spoiled kid was like, I was already upset because of my two strikes, but now you've pushed me over the edge. This can't mean something to you? Well, it means nothing to me, and I will take it down single-handedly. And, you know, Ben and Max are like, okay, dude, like, whatever, like, what? What, 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 what? what are you saying, bro? Little did Max and Ben know that the spoiled kid was not just saying, I'm going to take down this whole summer camp. He's not, he wasn't just saying that for saying that. He wasn't just saying that to try and scare them. These weren't random comments. 
These were, <laughs> as the people who read the title of this video already know. By the way, drop a like on the video if you haven't already. I don't normally ask, but just check to see if you have. Basically, right, Max and Ben didn't think anything of it. So the next day comes around, and this time, like, the spoiled kid brought something from home. A little something that you use if, you know, if, if you smoke, which you shouldn't, you might need something to light your cigarette, right? You might need something like that. But there are multiple use, uses for a lighter, as you shall see. So anyways, on this now infamous day in, like, Max's life, because it's a crazy day, he goes in, and it's, a, it's pretty normal. And so for the first half, before they go swimming in the afternoon, they're just doing some simple crafts again. So remember, this building has, like, a barn, which is, like, a big open area, and the big open area is attached to kind of a wing, in a sense, like a hall, which attaches to, like, several rooms where kids are able to do, like, crafts or whatever, as well as there's one kind of, like, camp counselor's room with, like, the all the office paper and all that kind of stuff. And remember, in the barn, there's a stage which has curtains. So, right, Max and Ben are just, you know, they're sitting around, and they're doing their crafts, and they're like... Dude, like, the spoiled kid was here earlier, he has to go to the bathroom, and he's been gone for, like, 20 minutes. So Max and Ben are like, dude, that's really weird. And, you know, Ben's like, well, I mean, I kind of have to go to the bathroom, do you want to come with me? That's not a weird request, they just wanted to, like, mess around in the bathroom. Not like that, stop being weird, you know what I mean. And so Max and Ben, you know, they both asked to go to the bathroom, the camp counselor's like, okay, like, don't, don't mess around, don't just play games in there the entire time. So they, they walk out, right, and they're walking down, and so the bathroom is right by the barn. But that's when they see that the barn door is open, and they're like, why is the barn door open? And they look in there, right, and they start to, like, smell a really weird smell. It is the smell of smoke. So they look in there, and they see the curtain, right, and they see the curtain is catching flame. And what they also see is the spoiled kid standing, sitting, or kind of cr like kneeling or crouching or whatever on the other side of the curtain with the lighter trying to catch that side on fire too. So at this point, Ben and Max are speechless. They are stunned. They turn to each other and they sprint back and they go, they start slamming their fists on the camp counselor's door, like the door for like where they all sit. Bum, 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 right? And so they open it up, and, like, some camp counselor was like, what's up, dudes? Like, you guys get in trouble or something? They're like, no, 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 come with us. So Ben and Max are, like, running down. The dude's like, guys, calm down. And that's when Ben and Max get to the barn. They open the door, and they point. And they point to the, the, the curtain now catching complete flame and also the spoiled kid lighting, trying to, like, light the other side on fire. And the camp counselor's like, holy... And, you know, and then, you know, he's like, he gets on his phone and he's like, emergency, emergency. And he goes to the fire alarm, pulls that sprinkler system start to go right. But the thing is, the fire is now spreading. This is like a wooden, it's like wooden carpet, everything. This is not this, this like barn, this whole like facility was made a while ago, bro. This thing was made like when the fire safety rules were not as good. So the sprinkler systems were okay, but the fire was just starting to spread really rapidly. And the camp counselor grabs the spoiled kid and says, you're coming with me. And all the kids are walking out in a single file line and they all stand out in the field. And most of them think, oh, it's our mandatory fire drill or something, whatever. But that's when one of the kids is like, well, I smelled smoke. And so Ben and Max turn around and they start telling every kid what they saw. And the rumors and the truth starts to spread insanely fast. All the kids are now telling everyone that the spoiled kid, the pee pee boy, the one who ate all their food and kicked a bunch of people because he'd lost in the game, decided to burn down the camp out of revenge. So rumors are starting to spread. All of a sudden they start to smell smoke and that's when they see you know, smoke start to pour out of the rooms, out of the windows, and that's when they start to see a flame catch. It is the craziest thing, because for the next 20 minutes, you know, they hear, like, a fire department coming, but they see the place starting to just completely burn down. Like, for some reason, whatever, some, maybe, like, the electrical system caught, and then, boom, something exploded, or all the insulation caught. I don't know what happened, but it just, the entire place basically went up in flames. And the entire time, like, three camp counselors basically had, like, the spoiled kid, like, and not in handcuffs, but they had him, like, you know, they surrounded him, were interrogating him, were, like, shouting at him, 
and, you know, the spoiled kid's mom appeared, and she runs over, and the camp counselors start, like, shouting and pointing and pointing at the building, pointing at the spoiled kid, and Max and Ben are just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, this is insane. And Max is like, all right, well, I knew this kid was weird, but, like, bro, what? And sure enough, the fire department comes, and, you know, they start, they put out the fire, but at this point, the entire, like, building is charred, it is gone. It's not burnt down to, like, the floor, but all they have left is, like, the outlines of the structure of the building. It is intense. So at this point, right, the kid got his third strike. Okay, it's a little bit more, <laughs> it's a little bit more worse than the third strike, right? So at this point, there were still two days left to camp. And the, uh, the camp basically sent out a parent saying that, like, there was a, there was a rogue, ca- like, kid that went and, like, tried to, like, burn down the, the camp, basically, and that, you know, they could either have a, you know, a 30%, like, a, or a, like, 10%, redu- like, a, t- a, f- a tuition, I guess, um, uh, refund. Because, like, a lot of it was already spent on, like, paying the counselors and the equipment. They said, we can give you, like, a 10% refund or, you know, the kids can come with us for the next two days and we'll just be at the pool because that obviously wasn't affected and do field games at the pool. Like, it's a terrible circumstance what happened, but we understand if you don't want your kid here anymore. So sure enough, right, Max and Ben, they came for the next two days and it just wasn't the same because of what just happened. And anyways, right, they have no idea what happened to the spoiled kid. Because police obviously got involved, but he's also a a kid, right? So I don't really know how that all works out. And, you know, Ben and, you know, Max, they never saw him again, obviously, because he did not return to the camp. Probably because he was banned for life and probably wasn't allowed at any other camps as well because, like, word got out, you know? And so Max and Ben actually did return to the camp the next year. However, it took place at a totally different location. Like, for the remainder of that camp's existence, they were never back at that location because they never rebuilt it. I think something else eventually got built there later. But Max and Ben, still to this day, whenever they go to the camp and they meet a bunch of new campers, Max and Ben, eventually, when they were older, they became, like, uh, counselors in training. And then when they decided to become actually counselors, they would always tell the story of the spoiled kid every single year. And it kind of became an underground camp legend. Yeah, so subscribe. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story of probably one of the most spoiled kids ever breaking his brand new $10,000 gaming computer because he was big mad that he lost a video game. So yeah, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's call the subscribers who submitted the story Zach and Ben. So yeah, this is kind of a duo story. I haven't done one of these in a while. So Zach and Ben went to school together, and there was this new kid, and his name was Liam. And in the very start of the year, like, Liam was kind of like, you know, he's new to the class, you know, Zach and Ben went over, and, you know, they were nice to him, but they never really befriended him like that. They never really became that close. And actually, unlike in a lot of my stories, when someone new comes, you know, and they're befriended right away, and then they're found out to be kind of weird, Zach and Ben, you know, didn't even befriend Liam till about halfway through the school year. They just happened to be assigned, like, the same project, or maybe, for some reason, they all happened to be in the same area or the same vicinity, and Zach and Ben really, you know, got a liking to Liam, and they all got, a, they all got along really well. So all of a sudden, right after a couple weeks of hanging out after, you know, figuring out that, you know, each other were cool, Liam invited Zach and Ben over to his house. He said, like, boys, you got to come over. I'm, like, getting my new, like, gaming computer this weekend. It's really crazy. It's, like, the top-end, top-end gaming computer. Basically, Liam came from, you know, a, a household that had a little extra little extra bread, a little extra cash, if you know what I mean. And, you know, his parents would, you know, occasionally let him spend it. And by occasionally, I mean always. And by spend it, I mean dropping big bucks. So Zach and Ben, kind of being aware of this, where, you know, they liked Liam as a friend, but then they were also excited to play on, like, a $10,000 gaming computer. They'll be like, oh, my God, think of the frames per second. Oh, my God, this is going to be crazy, right, or whatever. So that weekend, you know, or Zach and Ben go back home. They both ask their parents, like, hey, mom, do you mind if I go over to Liam's house? And they're like, yeah, sure. Like this weekend. Like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So anyways, the weekend comes around. Zach and Ben or Ben takes a ride with Zach. And, you know, Zach and Ben, you know, they go over. Zach's mom drives him over. And Zach's mom's like, all right, well, have fun, you guys. And remember, you can always call my number if you need anything. And they're like, yes, of course, mom. It's all good. So they arrive to Liam's house. And, you know, Liam greets them at the door. And, you know, they're like, oh, like, this is going to be a lot of fun. And Liam's like, 
Like, boys, I've just been setting up the game computer all day today. It is the craziest thing you will ever see or have ever seen or ever played on. It is the most epic, the most awesome, the most fantastic gaming computer ever. Like, every game is running so smoothly. It's crazy. So, obviously, Zach and Ben are really excited to go up and play on the new computer. So, they all run upstairs, and they go into Liam's room, and they see it. And it is like, it is, has, there's a massive monitor, there's a big, like, uh, gaming PC that has, like, very fancy, like, water cooling or whatever. It's got the RGB lights, it has, like, cool mouse or whatever, big gaming desktop. It is like, if you play video games, it is basically the, the peak of anything you could want for a gaming setup. It, I mean, it definitely wasn't minimalistic if that's your style, but otherwise it was the peak of like any gaming setup ever. So obviously Zach and Ben were really excited to take like, take a swing at it. So, you know, they run over and Liam's like, wait, wait, wait one second. I'm just gonna like, I'm still playing on it. I'm, I'm mid game. And he was not mid-game, but basically Liam sat down and is like, S like, sit back, relax, and watch some gaming. And the thing was, right, uh, Zach and Ben, while they were friends with Liam, they also did want to try out the video game themselves. I mean, it was fine to watch. I mean, look, bro, like a lot of people watch YouTube videos to watch other people play the video games. That's totally fair. Like, when I was a little kid, I would go over to my friend's house and, you know, I would actually enjoy kind of the experience of watching them play because it was like I was kind of playing along and I also knew I would have been trash so it <laughs> I actually didn't mind it but you know Zach and Ben kind of did they you know they kind of wanted to play along but Liam was like oh, one more game I'll get you guys on next game and you would say that again and again and hours were kind of going by and all Zach and Ben were doing were watching was watching Liam play like I don't know like Counter-Strike or something and Liam was okay but you know everyone else in his lobby was a little bit better so they were basically watching their friend lose in 4k ultra hd <laughs> with 10,000 frames per second bro like it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 frames per second you're still gonna lose if you're not better than the other person specs are pretty good but they're not gonna make it if you're not good so liam started to get progressively angrier and angrier and Zach and Ben were like bro if you ever want to take a break we'd be happy to swap and he's like no I gotta fix my KD ratio which basically that's the ratio of like how many people like how many people you get versus the number of people who get you in like video games in a lot of cases and uh since uh you know Liam was losing a lot more than he was winning his KD ratio was getting worse and worse and it's almost kind of like the gambling mentality like oh I gotta like gamble my way back to the money I've lost through gambling. It's like, bro, stats are not, stats are against you on this one. And, uh, you know, Zach and Ben were just watching as Liam was like doing worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And every single, like, he'd be like, God, ah, this game is rigged. And it wasn't just everyone else was better than him. And Zach and Ben were like, bro, do you want to like do something else? Cause at this point, Zach and Ben look at the, uh, they look at the clock and it's about like three hours since they've been here. And all they have done is they've watched Liam play and fail counter-strike for three hours. So either they want to get a turn on it and maybe play Counter-Strike or a different game, or, you know, they're still friends with Liam. Maybe they just want to go and do something else with him. Maybe they just want to go and, I, I, I don't know, man, like maybe they just want to go and play outside or watch a movie or just do something else from watching him lose and get angry at Counter-Strike again and again. So Liam, Zach and Ben are like, oh, dude, like when's, when do you want to, do you want to go outside or anything like that? He's like, bro, did you not hear me? I got to fix my KD in Counter-Strike. Like, I keep losing. I got to fix the ratio. Like, it's going to take a second, boys, so strap in. And they're like, they, Zach and Ben kind of look at each other like, bro, what's going on here? But the thing is, right, they, Liam keeps getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And this is where kind of like things start to get a little bit interesting. Because Liam, in his rage, is starting to like slam on his desk. He's like, Bruh! every single time he loses. And every single time he loses, which is a lot, he starts to get angrier and angrier. And then he takes his mouse and slams it on his desk. And it doesn't break the mouse, right? But it's, it's risky. It could have broken. It, it, the mouse could have broken, right? So Zach and Ben kind of look at each other like, uh, uh, this is not progressing in a good way. Because sure enough, right, you know, Liam was getting angrier and angrier, and he was, like, pounding his fist. And then one time, he even kicked his gaming computer, which they are like, whoa, chill, bro. 
Because imagine just a clean kick to the gaming computer, bro. You could have just destroyed the entire thing. Like, sure, that one thing wasn't $10,000. It was kind of the whole setup put together. But that's a good, like, five, dollars $6,000. He got the craziest specs ever. And so Liam was getting angrier and angrier. And Zach and Ben were like, okay, this is not great, right? <laughs> you know, he's starting to, uh, he's starting to lose it a little bit. And then he was like, bah, bah. and this is where the whole climb, not the whole climax, but this is where things start to get really crazy because Liam, this, it seems like a random game, but this was a really important game to Liam because he'd been losing for so long that in his head, he said, Liam, you need to win this game. You need to do it. And, you know, Zach and Ben were just thinking it was a normal game and they were watching and Liam was getting shot. He's like, ah, no, 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 I'm good at this. I'm good at this. He starts going around. He starts panicking, starts like just has no aim at all, completely misses everyone. And when it says like, I don't know, you lose or whatever, Liam just is silent. Because normally for the last hour, he's been like, ah, like an angry grunt. So Zach and Ben at first think that, oh, well, this Liam kid finally is getting over his rage problem. But they were soon, within three seconds, completely proven wrong when Liam takes his fist and goes, bah! and just goes, boom, into the, like, the, the monitor screen. The entire screen is like cracked and destroyed and falls over the desk. And then Liam stands up, and Zach and Ben are looking at each other like, oh my god. And Liam is like, yeah, and takes his like, like takes his like foot and just goes boom and kicks his gaming computer with such force that actually lifts 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 up off the ground flies for a little bit hits the hardwood floor and shatters and explodes and water starts leaking out of it for like the water cooling and little bits and pieces go everywhere and that's when liam flips his desk takes his mouse, swings it around on the mouse cord, is screaming the entire time, and throws it against the wall. The mouse explodes as well, and Liam starts huffing and puffing. He's like... <sighs> and at this point, Zach and Ben are just, like, looking at each other like, oh my god, bro, oh my... God. Anyways, if you've made it this far into the video, comment, uh, spoiled down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And then also, if you want to support the channel or keep supporting the channel, because honestly, just watching this far into the video helps support the channel a lot. All you got to do is maybe after this video, maybe at a later point, sit down and watch a bunch of videos. Watch one, two, three, or just binge watch the videos. And in the comment section down below, let me know how many videos you watched today and also what you're doing while you're watching the videos. Are you playing a video game? Are you I don't know, drawing, animating. I saw some people like writing like a screenplay, trying to go to sleep, cleaning your room. Let me know, I'm curious. Anyways, let's get back to the story because let me just say that Liam is starting to regret what he did. So anyways, Zach and Ben are just standing there, just looking around the room, just looking at the damage of the situation. So they're looking around and so yeah, Liam's monitor is like completely cracked and destroyed. His desk has been flipped over. Um, the, the big gaming computer has spilled into a billion pieces, is all over on the floor, cracked liquid, completely destroyed, probably like $5 of value left, right? The mouse isn't even a mouse anymore. It is splattered into a million piece pieces and there's a, like a, there's like a crunch mark on the wall. It is like cracked where he slammed it. And Liam is still like, <laughs> and Zach and Ben are like, oh my God, bro. Like this kid just went crazy because they knew how much this was. Liam was toting how it like overall cost $10,000 and how he just got it. And after having it for like three hours and just not being good at Counter-Strike, instead of being like, let me just close down, shut down my computer and go outside because I'll probably enjoy the video game another day. I'm actually just gonna break my entire setup out of rage. And slowly, Liam is like, uh, uh, oh no, oh no, 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 oh no, what did I do? Boys, what did I do, what did I do? And they turn to Zach and Ben and they're like, um, bro, I don't know how to put this, but I mean, I mean, you did just break your entire setup. And he's like, no, 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 this can't be happening. This can't be happening. I did just, and they're like, um, I mean, you did just do it, but um, he's like, boys, like, I, my parents know about this. This was, like, my big gift. Like, I'm not even, like, this is, this sucks, but they can't know about it. And, and they're like, uh, Zach and Ben are like, um, well, and they look around the room, 
and there's just bits of computers all over the place. The thing's leaking. Everything's destroyed. There's cracks on the walls. They're like, uh, well, if they come in, they're going to see this. And he's like, okay, boy, I'm sorry. Like, I know you wanted to play on it, but that's probably not going to happen now. And Zach and Ben just look at each other like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen since the gaming computer is in 100,000 pieces on the floor right now. And Zach's, or, or Liam's like, we need to hide this. Like, I need your help. Like, I, I'll make it up to you guys. We'll have, like, we'll do fun things. Like, later, we just got to clean this up. Like, my parents cannot know. And, you know, Zach and Ben are like, I mean, okay. I mean, Zach and Ben weren't going to be like, I don't know, asses and be like, haha, lol, suck it, dude. They're going to help, right? So they go downstairs and, you know, Zach sneaks downstairs and Liam says, okay, the trash bags are in the closet next to the basement. So he goes downstairs and Liam's mother's like, Zach, how's it going? And Zach's like, ha it's going great. There's no gaming computer in a thousand pieces upstairs. <laughs> no, but he's like, yeah, it's going great. Thanks for thanks for asking. And she's like, oh, what are you down here for? And he's like, uh, because he can't say, oh, I need a trash bag to put all to hide all the pieces of the ten thousand dollar gaming setup that your son just destroyed after three hours of being garbage at a video game. And he's like, uh, a glass of water, and she's like, oh. Let me go get you one. She runs off into the other room. Zach is next to the closet, next to the basement. He opens it up. He sees the trash bags. And then he hears her coming back, so he quickly closes the closet door and intercepts her. And is like, thank you so much for the glass of water. She's like, oh, you're welcome. She goes into another room. Zach opens up the closet door again, reaches in, pulls out a trash bag, quietly closes the closet door, runs back upstairs, and Liam's like, bro, why do you get a glass of water? He's like, long story, hands the trash bag. They start putting parts of the gaming computer, whatever, in there. Liam's like, bro, why did you only get one? And Zach's like, uh, he's like, we need more. Zach's like, dude, I don't know. I've never broken a $10,000 gaming setup before. And Liam's like, not funny, bro. Just get another trash bag. So he goes back downstairs. And Zach's mom's like, oh, you're back down again. He's like, oh, yeah, I just got to use the bathroom. And she's like, oh, did Liam not tell you about the bathroom right next to his room? And Zach's like, ah, ha, ha, I guess not. And she's like, oh, well, it's, it's over here. Let me show you. And so Zach goes to the bathroom, basically just stands in the bathroom for a minute, not doing anything, and then leaves and sees that, you know, once again, uh, you know, Liam's mom is in the other room. So just goes by her quietly, goes into the closet, and just takes like three trash bags at this point, goes back upstairs and... Thankfully, those three trash bags are enough to kind of uh, enclose every or get everything, all the parts and everything to go into the trash bags. They put it in his closet. They, you know, they put the desk back up because while the desk was like, like flipped over, it wasn't completely destroyed. It had some cracks on it. There was still chipped paint on the wall. There was nothing they could do about that at that time. So they're just like, oh, shoot. Um, so anyways, like Liam, like gets a piece of paper, draws something on it is like, Welcome to Liam's a crib or whatever, something corny, but whatever. He takes that piece of paper, tapes it over the part on the wall with the massive crack on it. It's like, okay, this shall do. So anyways, Liam, Zach, and Ben, you know, they go downstairs and Liam's like, do you want to watch a movie? And they're like, yeah, sure, that sounds fine. They watch a movie downstairs and Liam or Zach and Ben are just texting each other the entire time like, oh my God. What just happened? And Ben's like, bro, I'm trying to play in that $10,000 gaming setup. Like, what happened, bro? But anyways, they go upstairs when, you know, Liam's mom's like, oh, like, it's time for dinner, boys. Like, are you guys ready? It's time for dinner. So they come upstairs and, you know, the, the, the table's all set for dinner and they sit down and, you know, Liam's mom made a really good, like, steak roast. So she made something. I don't think a steak roast is a thing. She made really good food. They're all sitting around enjoying it. And that's when Liam's mom is like, so Liam, did you show the boys your new uh, video gaming thing that we bought you for your birthday? And, he turn and she turns and she's like, boys, it's a very special video game thing. I'm like Liam and I sat around we, and I got him the greatest stuff for video games. And Liam is like, ah, ha, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Zach and Ben are like, ah, okay, yeah, we've seen it. And she's like, boys, like, isn't it so great? You know, uh, Liam, you know, your aunt Gabby, 
She wanted to see a photo of you sitting in the gaming setup. Can we take a photo of it after dinner? Liam's face drops. Zach's face drops. Ben's face drops. They're all like, oh, no, bro. It's over. We're done. <laughs> this is GG Unlucky. We're dead, bro. It's over. And sure enough, right, you know, Liam's like, uh, well, I was thinking of, like, doing stuff with Zach and Ben after dinner, so I might be busy. And, you know, Liam's mom's like, you know, it's only going to take a moment. And also, you know, since we bought you that really expensive gaming setup, is it only fair that we get, like, 30 seconds of a photo with you playing on it? Like, come on, that should only take a little bit of time. And she turns to Zach and Ben, and he's like, she's like, Liam, Zach and Ben, I'm sure that you wouldn't mind if we took 30 seconds out of your time with Liam to take a little photo of him on his gaming setup. And Zach and Ben were just staring at her. Because they didn't want to say, yeah, that's totally fine. Which would be reasonable, but also reasonable under normal circumstances. And these were not normal circumstances. But, you know, they also didn't want to be like, no, I cannot do that. No, no, that's unacceptable. You can't have 30 seconds with, you, with your son. You witch, you're the worst. I hate you. They can't pull an Anakin Skywalker right there. I hate you. Anyways, um, so they were like, <laughs> and Liam and Zach and Ben were just looking at each other. And they pull out their phones under the table and they're texting each other and Liam makes like a group chat that they had, they made before for like, what's the address? What's the time to come over for the sleepover? He's like, boys, what do we do? And they're like, dude, I don't know. I really don't know. So they were like, just barely playing with their food. And the mom's like, Liam, but why are you guys not eating it? Because it was actually really good. And Liam's like, I'm eating it. I'm just savoring it. And they're like, yeah, me too. So they keep eating. And they're really just messing with their food to buy them more time to figure out what to do before their mom comes in and is like, oh my God, like all that kind of stuff. And so sure enough, Liam sends a text saying, hey, I, I don't think my mom totally remembers what a gaming setup looks like. So maybe we can make a fake one, but I need you guys to go up and come up with something before I will be here with my mom. And Zach and Ben are like, well, I feel like your mom will just like, if we go up, your mom will be like, oh, why don't we just go up now? And Zach's like, hey, I'll stay here. I'll talk to, I'll talk to your mom. How about you and Ben go up and come up with something? And Liam's like, okay, that's fine. So Liam and Ben are like, all right, thank you so much. And Zach's like, oh, Liam's mom. She's like, yes, I have some questions for you. So basically, right, uh, I'm not going to tell the part of the story where, or actually I will. So this is a part where it splits. I'm going to tell Zach's perspective and then Ben's perspective because Ben went upstairs to help Liam make the fake setup and Zach stayed down the stairs to try and buy a bit as much time with Liam's mom as freaking possible. So anyways, uh, Ben and Liam, they run upstairs and Liam's like, dude, I don't even know what this means, but we got to come up with something. And, you know, Zach's like, um, well, okay, well, what do we have around the room? So Liam is like, oh, wait, I still have like parts of my old gaming setup. Like, uh, we got to like mix it up with something new because my mom might remember it if it just looks like the old thing. So anyways, Liam gets out his old like laptop, you know, he puts it out and then he decides, okay, we got to make it look like it's something new. So they take out a bunch of markers and pens and like all this like arts and crafts stuff and they start like decorating it. Like they start drawing all over it, but they try to make it look as like official as possible and they also, like, Liam's like, oh, I think I have, like, some RGB lights or something. So they put that on the computer, right? It looks really scuffed, but, like, when moms aren't going to really know what the new video game tech is going to be, he's like, oh, I need a mouse. He's like, I still have my old one. Takes out his old mouse. It's, like, a white mouse, so they're able to draw all over it and make markings and be like, ooh, this is really the most epic mouse ever. And he's like, well, my mom also remembers buying, like, a gaming, like, a, a PC, and she says, she's not going to, if she doesn't see a big box, you know, that's going to be a problem. So Liam looks around and, you know, Liam's like, oh my God, I almost forgot. Liam had like a big black box that he bought something from Amazon or some kind of shipping service. And it came in a black box and like, he just saved the box for some reason. He put the box under his desk. He's like, you know, I, I need to find some kind of like wire type thing. And he goes over to the smashed mouse. He pulls the wire out of the smashed mouse. He puts the wire into this empty black cardboard box and then he like attaches the wire to his computer by just literally putting his his mac who's like old like a i don't know probably was like a chromebook or something on top of like the wire so it looked like it was connected to anyone who has no idea what they're looking at this was like a little bit it was kind of convincing if you had no idea what you're looking at 
And that's when they heard Liam's mom come up the stairs. So anyways, flash forward, like, flash back, like, five minutes. So Liam and Ben, they go up the stairs, and Zach is sitting there at the dinner table trying to figure out a way to stall Liam's mom for as long as humanly possible. So he's like, so tell me about your time on the, uh, the parent council for education. Basically, there's, like, a parent like little organization that would like send suggestions to the school or whatever. And she's like, Oh my God, Zach, you don't want to hear about that. How about we just go upstairs? And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I do. No, no, no. You, you got me all wrong. I, I, I do want to hear about that. I want to hear all about the, 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 the legislation that you do. Um, yeah. Tell me about the legislation. I'm really invested in the legislation of parent teacher. Oh my God. And she's like, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So after about like a minute, she's like, okay, well, that's the gist. Do you want to go up now? And he just knows for a fact, because like Ben basically said, yo, we need time. And he's like, um, so, well, actually, you know, I heard that you were an English major. And she's like, I was an English major. How did you know? And he's like, uh, 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 well, I'm not doing well in my English class. Can you give me some advice? And she's like, you know, Zach, I would be happy to sit down with you in like an hour or so and just go over everything I know about English. And he's like, well, can you give me a quick rundown now? And she's like, you know what? Sure, sure I can. So three to four minutes later, she's done. And she's like, all right, well, I can't wait anymore. I got to see this gaming setup with my little boy in it. So she starts walking up the stairs. And Zach is like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So Zach is like walking up the stairs with her and is like trying to like speak as loud as possible to try and give a little bit of an ad, like an advance to both Ben and Liam so that they could like hear her coming. So anyway, Zach like opens the door and he's like, Zach is terrified because what he sees in front of him is the most ridiculous thing he's ever seen. An old Chromebook with crappy marker all over it, a old mouse with marker on top of it, a cardboard freaking box with a weird wire coming out of it. And, you know, Liam's mom is just speechless for a second. And they're all like, oh no, she doesn't buy it. She doesn't buy it. And she's like, it's beautiful. And they're all like, oh my God. She's like, Liam. Liam, go sit in that chair right now. I'm going to take a photo for your Aunt Gabby. She's going to love it. You know, Liam's mom takes out her, like, her iPad. She's like, say cheese for Facebook. Liam's like, ah, ha, ha. She takes the photo, sends it to Aunt Gabby. She's like, oh, this is so great, Liam. Liam, what's that leaking? And that's when, like, Liam, Zach, and Ben, they all turn to where Liam's mom is pointing out from the closet is a leaking puddle. And Liam, Zach, and Ben realize that the gaming computer that was smashed into a billion pieces and put into the, uh, uh, the, 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 like, the trash bag, the tra- it must, something in there must have ripped the trash bag and like the, the coolant from the gaming system must be leaking out. And Liam's like, I don't know, Mom. I'll go clean that up. I want to like, play with my friends right now. And she's like, no, let me do it. You guys have fun in your gaming adventures. Walks over, opens up the closet. She's like, Liam, what are these trash bags? And Liam's just like, I don't know, Mom. I'll bring them downstairs. She's like, no, 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 I got it. She opens one up. She opens up another one. She goes in there, starts messing around, starts looking at stuff. She's like, Liam, what is this? And that's when she pulls out a piece a piece of like the plastic shell around the gaming computer that had the logo. And since she bought the stuff, she recognized the logo. She's like, Liam. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yes, mom. She's like, can I have a word with you? Can your little friends leave the room for a second? And, and Zach and Ben are just like, oh no, bro, we're done. And so they got out and they walked downstairs and they just hear, Liam, you know how much money I spent on this? This is ridiculous. What did you do? Did you throw it out of a 10-story building? <laughs> and Liam's like, Mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like the craziest freak out ever. And Zach and Ben are just like, <sighs> they're just standing downstairs like, well, we tried, dude. Like, I don't know. Just don't break your $10,000 setup next time, maybe. And so eventually, after 20 minutes, they stop. They, they, the yelling stops. They get a text from Liam saying, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, it's like 7, so it's kind of late. But can you ask your parents to come pick you up? Like, my mom just, my mom wants to have a long conversation with me, and I don't think it's going to be fun for you guys to be here. 
And Lee and Zach and Ben are like, sure. Zach sends a text to his mom. And his Zach's mom's like, what did you boys do? And Zach's like, it's not us, actually. We, we were cool. But can you come pick us up? And Zach's mom's like, okay, of course. Like, give me 20 minutes. So after 20, 20 minutes comes by, Zach sends a text to Liam saying, hey, sorry about tonight. Like, we're peacing now. Uh, we'll see you in school tomorrow. Hope that you survive. If you're banned from gaming forever, you can always come over to our houses. We'll let you play. Like, it's all good. So they get in the car. And Zach's mom's like, boys, what happened? And Zach and Ben are like, all right, you're not going to believe this story. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have two stories for you, the two most spoiled kids I have ever heard of. I know you'll enjoy the story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel, watch this video on Spotify if you want to, link into the description, and let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the first story, Chris. So anyways, Chris was in class, and during this class, like, there was a project you had to do where it's a very common project that you get in school. It's the what do you want to do when you grow up project. So Chris, at this point in his life, was in third grade. So he was pretty young at this point. And uh, the, he was basically given the week to make a little summary of what he wanted to do. And then at the end of the week on Friday, present it to everyone in the class. There was also a kid in Chris's class who we're just going to call the spoiled kid. And he was kind of known as the spoiled kid because he always just acted very entitled. He always had nice fancy stuff on or always had new clothes or whatever and uh, most uh, most notably is he always became like his dad drove this like sports car to come pick him up which bro why are you driving the lambo to pick your kid up from third grade but anyways right he was kind of known as a spoiled kid and uh, that's kind of irrelevant for right now because chris really wanted to be a firefighter at that point in his life so he went back home he asked his mom if he, he could go and get like a firefighter costume from a halloween store they went they found one they got it Chris like looked up or asked his mom to help him learn some information about being a firefighter and he put together a nice little presentation. So now on the day, it is now Friday, it's the day that everyone is presenting and anyways, right, so you know, everyone is sitting there, a lot of people are either in costumes or maybe they're, you know, they have a poster board, Chris happens to be in costume and has a poster board, but you know who doesn't have either really? Uh, the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid literally has neither. He's just sitting there. And people are kind of looking over like, um, uh, what's going on, bro? Like, why does this kid not have anything? That's kind of crazy. And they're like, I don't know. Or Chris is like, maybe, maybe he has something memorized in his head. Maybe I just can't see what he has to, like, present or whatever. But sure enough, it's time for Chris to go up there. Chris goes up, nails his presentation, says, I want to be a firefighter, says, I'm your firefighter facts. And sure enough, more people go up. You know, there's doctor, lawyer, uh, astronaut, uh, chemist, mad scientist, SpongeBob SquarePants. There's a lot of professions that people go up and say that they want to do. And that's when it's time for the spoiled kid. So the teacher's going down the list and reading out names. It's like, all right. Spoiled kid, it is your time to go up. And the spoiled kid is like, he looks up, he's like, oh, whatever, and he walks up to the front of the class, and he said, when I am older, I want to be rich. And everyone's kind of sitting there like, okay. And the teacher was kind of looking at him like, and? And? And the spoiled kid's like, that's it, that's my presentation. And the teacher's like, like, wait a second, spoiled kid. Are you telling me that the only thing that you did was say that, like, I want to be rich and you're done with it? Like, that's all you did? And the, and the spoiled kid's like, well, yeah. And the teacher's like, okay, well, okay. Because, you know, at this point, they didn't really have grades. They got, like, a check plus or a check minus or something. But it really didn't affect them at this point. They were only in third grade. So the teacher wasn't like, I'm going to fail you. But the teacher's like, uh, well, maybe you can add a little bit more on the spot. And the spoiled kid's like, well, I want to be wealthy too. <laughs> Which, like, bro, rich and wealthy is basically the same thing in a sense. And the teacher's knows, like, no, no, no. What are you going to do to become rich? And the spoiled kid's like, um, I I'm just going to become rich. And at this point, the teacher's like, w what do you mean? And the spoiled kid, like, is like, well, some people, when they're born, they're just, like, born, like, better than other people and there did they just become rich and the teacher's like spoiled kid like people aren't born better than other people everyone is born the same at birth like that's ridiculous and the spoiled kid's like well 
well, then why, like, why do I have all this cool stuff in my house? And when I go to other people's houses, they don't have that cool stuff. Remember, bro was in third grade, but still, like, what? Uh, I mean, the thing is, bro, this is definitely the parents coming in and telling some, like, some, some kind of, like, brainwashing right here. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, like, that is super disrespectful. Like, everyone has different opportunities and disadvantages in their lives just because, like, your parents were able to, like, you know, I'm sure that they worked very hard, but there's also a bit of luck involved in that, like, you gotta be great, like, you gotta be grateful for all that, you can't just say that you got that because you deserve it, like, you were just happened to be born from them, and the spoiled kid's like, well, I don't understand, like, I thought the way the world worked was, like, if you are rich, that just meant you were better, and poor people are poor because they're worse, and the teacher is just staring at the spoiled kid with his mouth, with his mouth, like, wide open, and everyone else in class is, like, kind of turning around, and, like, talking to each other, like, Dude, what? What did this kid just say? Did he just say I was worse because my parents make less? He said, I, I'm inherently worth, like, worse less? Like, what? And the spoiled kid said, yeah, like, what? And he said, also, what does, like, job have to do with money? And he's like, isn't it just, like, the poor people have jobs and then, you know, the better people, a.k.a. rich people, just they, they're, they're just able to sit there? And, and the teacher's like, no, like, you make money from your jobs. The spoiled kid's like, oh... Okay, well then, I want to be really rich when I grow up. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, you don't understand. Like, you are put in a fortunate posi position where your parents have done well. Like, that's awesome. That's great. Whatever, right? But that's not a job. Just having money is not a job. That's not how this works. And everyone could kind of tell that the teacher was starting to get a little bit upset because, look... Being a teacher is a thankless profession, right? You have a lot of snotty kids in your class that don't care what you're doing. You also don't get paid at all. Most people, most of the time, teachers are doing it because they believe that their work is important, you know, teaching the next generation of kids. And that is really the only way they get paid in gratitude. Or not gratitude, but just like knowing they're doing something important. So this teacher was a little mad that this kid, the spoiled kid, was basically like, well, I plan to do nothing and be really lame when I grow up. Like, I'm just going to sit there and, you know, fiend off all the money I'm going to get in my inheritance. Basically what this kid was saying. So when you're, anyways, right, the spoiled kid is like, I don't, I don't understand. And, you know, the teacher's like, okay, pick a profession, spoiled kid. Pick a profession. And the spoiled kid is starting to get angry himself. He's like, I just want to be rich. I don't care what you're saying. And the teacher is like, that's not a profession. Choose a job. What do you want to do? And this is when the spoiled kid says, Daddy says I don't need a job because he's so rich he'll pay for everything I ever want. And that's when everyone in the class is like, hey, yo, bro, what? Huh? And sure enough, right, the teacher is like starting to get a little upset as well. And the teacher's like, you know what? Let's pretend you had to contribute to society in some way. Let's pretend. So, I mean, look, it's a grown adult fighting with a little kid. So I don't know if anyone's really the person in the right here. I don't think the kid's saying that, like, everyone is inherently worse than him because his parents have money is in the right. But I also don't think an adult fighting with a kid's in the right either. But anyways, right, you know, so it's a heated match. And uh, Chris is just sitting there very awkwardly, very uncomfortable, and that's when the spoiled kid starts to, like, he basically loses it. He starts saying, just because you poor, broke individuals with no money, like, are mad at me and are jealous for what I earned. I earned, bro. Congrats on being the right sperm that went to the right cell. Like, congrats. I don't know. Like, what are you saying? But anyways, he's like, you guys are all so jealous. I can smell the jealousy from here. <laughs> oh, man, it reeks of jealousy because you guys are all jealous and haters. I hate how hatery you guys are. You're all jealous and you suck and because you're poor and broke and lame. And the kid literally runs out of the classroom. And he just like, at this point, right, the teacher's like, oh, my God, like, what am I going to do? Like, and the teacher's like, okay, class, like, please ignore what just happened. Uh, let's continue on. And basically what happens, the spoiled kid ran out, went to his backpack. They have to keep their backpacks outside. They go out and they grab their books or whatever. And he grabs his, like, portable phone. He dials up the, like, the number for his dad. And within 30 minutes, his dad arrives at the school. And so anyways, you know, Chris is in class. He's in there finishing up their presentations when the spoiled kid and the spoiled kid's dad barge through the door. And the spoiled kid's dad is like, looks at the teacher and says, 
my son says that you were shaming him for us being successful. Like, is this true? And the teacher said, today was supposed to be career day. Your son went up there and just said, you know, I want to be rich. So I kind of just pressed him and asked him, okay, well, what career path do you want to do to obtain such status and wealth, right? And he said that, you know, he's going to be rich because he deserves it. We're poor because we're, you know, we don't deserve it. And that like, you're going to basically pay for everything that he ever wants and that he doesn't need a job. And his dad says, and you got mad at my son for saying that? That's exactly what's happening. That's exactly true. And the teacher's like, wait, so you believe that like, the reason why some people are poor and some people are rich is that they're just born as worse off, like they're not as good of a person. And his dad and the spoiled kid's dad is like, yeah, that's exactly what I think. And he looks down at his son and he says, you know what, son? Good for you. You're taking off, you're taking on like your old dad. Like, you know what? Let's go home. I'm going to take you out for ice cream. The spoiled kid's like, yay, ice cream. And the kid and the, and the father walk off. This is kind of a sad story because, look, at the end of the day, a lot of times views and opinions of kids are really just formed from their environment. And a lot of times parents are like the major are kind of like the main factor in determining what that environment will be. So this is kind of an unfortunate story, but it is what it is. And yeah, so Chris, like, remember, this happened a long time ago for Chris, and uh, Chris was, this kid kind of a little bit grew out of it. He was always kind of been spoiled and entitled, even as he got older, but he wasn't as bad as this. For the next spoiled kid story, we're going to call the subscriber Clarence. So anyways, Clarence was at a restaurant, and it was a bit of a fancier restaurant. It wasn't like drive through McDonald's or something. It was a bit of a fancier sit-down restaurant, and Clarence and his parents sat down next to another table that probably just got there a couple minutes before them. It was a mom, a dad, and a son. This son was probably in, like, he was on the younger side. He might have been the fourth or fifth grade or something. But this son, we're just going to call the spoiled kid because, oh, my God, he was the spoiled kid, right? So first of all, Clarence was watching, and, you know, Clarence's parents said, hey, no phones, no iPads, no devices or anything at the table. When you're sitting at the table, please pay attention to, like, your other, the other people there. Like, your comp it's important to, like, maintain conversations. And I think that's a good thing, personally. I try and obtain, like, uphold that as much as I possibly can. But anyways, right, Clarence was looking over, and there was a kid, the spoiled kid, had his big old iPad, and he was just on it, and he had the iPad on the table. And Clarence saw the spoiled kid's mom be like, so, spoiled kid, how was school today? And spoiled kid's like, shut up, mom, I'm watching Minions. And he says, on his iPad. And, you know, the spoiled kid's dad is like, son, it's not polite to talk to your mother like that. He's like, shut up, dad, I'm on my iPad watching Minions. And this point, <laughs> at this point, like, Clarence is like, wow, this kid's like a real jerk. Like, bro, look, your parents, first of all, they're the ones who raise you. You know, they put a house under your head, under your head, over your head. They gave you that iPad. You've done none of this before. Yes, you know, they brought you into this world. So, you know, you're entitled to a little bit. But come on now, have a little bit of respect when everything you have in life is because of them. Don't be like, bro, I'm watching Minions, I'm too busy. Like, get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. That's ridiculous. And sure enough, right, you know, Clarence watches as this kid is like, shut up, mom, I'm watching Minions, I'm gonna be in my iPad. And so sure enough, right, his, the spoiled kid's parents kind of give up, which, look, if I'm gonna be a parent, I'm not giving up, I'm not tolerating disrespect like that. But anyways, right, so sure enough, you know, this kid is on his iPad, and he says he doesn't have the volume down low. He literally has the volume cranked up to the maximum. Yes, this was a restaurant with a lot of people. There was noise. There was ambiance. But within that ambiance, you could hear Minion Rush gameplay. It was the loudest thing in the room. And the thing is, right, maybe the person sitting at the end, like, a very far away, couldn't hear, like, the Minion Rush in the background from this iPad. But since Clarence and his family were sitting right next to them... Like, their conversation was being drowned out by minion sounds. Like, from the movie, he's like, oh my god. And, and the thing is, right, this spoiled kid, you might be thinking, wow, this kid's disrespecting his parents, and he's on his iPad being super loud. He, this must be the worst he gets. No, trust me. He gets so much worse. Real quick, comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. 
I really would appreciate it just to see who made it this far. Also, if you want to support the channel, literally just continue watching these videos. I keep on seeing comments from people saying, I've watched five videos today. I've watched 20 videos this week. I just want to let you know that when I see those comments, I try and heart them as much as I can. And even if I don't, just know I really appreciate it because watching a bunch of videos is what is helping the channel get promoted as much as it is. So I really, really, really do appreciate it. And also, yes, we are on Spotify. It is linked in the description. But also, if you look up Connor Pugs, it'll be the only Connor Pugs podcast, I do believe. And you can watch these videos on the go or whatever, right? And also, don't forget to use code CONNORPUGS on GamerSubs for 10% off. It helps me. It helps you. You'll love to see it. And finally, finally, if you want to submit your own stories, these are subscriber-submitted stories, go to my Instagram account, CONNORPUGS. It's also in the description. Follow me, and then DM me your stories. And don't say, oh, I have a story. Do you want to hear it? Just DM me the stories. A lot of times, even if I use the stories, I won't even respond just in case I change my mind a little bit later. So always be checking in with the videos to see if your story was used. And also, if I do use your story, there's a good chance I alter most of the details just to make sure that it doesn't get back to the person and you get in trouble. And also just keeping it good like that. Anyways, let's get back to it. So sure enough, Clarence is listening over. And the other table with the spoiled kid, they get their food, right? Like food was given out, like handed over. And, uh, you know, on this like dish or whatever, there was a, like a main course and then there was like vegetables. And the thing is, right, I get it. If you don't like your vegetables, you don't like your vegetables. There's not a lot that I can do about it personally. I think you should eat your vegetables. I think that it's important to eat your greens. However, if you don't, Whatever, man. I'm not in charge of you. However, what you should not be doing is taking your broccoli and boom, throwing it across the room to random people. That's not what you should be doing, to say the least, right? So anyways, this, you know, Clarence is sitting there, and he's not even looking at the spoiled kid's table when he feels something hit his face. And he looks down at the table, and there's a piece of broccoli on the frickin' table, bro. There's a piece of broccoli on the table. And sure enough, right, you know, he looks over and the spoiled kid is picking up the broccoli on his plate and chucking it across the room. Boom, boom, just like throwing it across the place, hitting other people. They're looking over and the spoiled kid's mom is like, like, spoiled kid, don't throw your food. Don't like this is not a food fight. Like have some respect. And the spoiled kid's like, shut up, mom. I'm going to do whatever I want. And at this point, right, you know, Clarence is looking over. He's like, wow, like this is kind of disrespectful. This is kind of like not a great thing. And sure enough, the spoiled kid can continues to just take fistfuls of broccoli and peas and just throwing them all around the place. And the thing is, no one at the, or no one at the, uh, at the restaurant who works there noticed this because I'm pretty sure they'd come over and ask him to stop. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they think it's such a great thing. They say, oh, sir, thank you so much for chucking your mushed up vegetables in your hand all, across, all over the place. Thank you so much. You're so valuable to our customer service. You add to our atmosphere with all the vegetables flying around. Like, no, dude, like no one actually wants that. But this is not as bad as the spoiled kid gets. Because the next thing he does is finally, right, he gets bored. He eats like a little bit off his plate. And then he leaves the table. And the spoiled kid's dad is like, spoiled kid, get back here, sit down. We're going to have a nice conversation. He's like, no, shut up, dad. <laughs> and he just kind of just starts walking around. And that's when Clarence watches as the spoiled kid approaches his table. And Clarence is like, oh, my God, like, what's going on here? And Clarence had, like, a big thing of fries because he got steak and he got steak with fries on the side. And he sees the spoiled kid look over, come over to the table. And Clarence and his parents are like, hello there. Spoiled kid is like, hello. And he literally takes his big greasy palms and grabs a handful of fries and runs away. And Clarence is like, hey, like, whoa, bro, like, come back. And the thing is, right, he took like three fourths of the fries. He took most of Clarence's fries. And at this restaurant, the fries were like the greatest fries around. Clarence has been thinking about these fries for weeks. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. The fries are good. So Clarence is upset, and he starts looking over, and he sees the spoiled kid is going table to table, literally taking people's stuff. 
He's going from table to the next table to the next table to the next table, literally just nabbing stuff from people. And people are like, hey, like, what's going on here? And that's when someone gets up and talks to a manager of the restaurant, pointing at the spoiled kid. And Clarence watches as the manager is, like, looking over, the person complaining is pointing at the spoiled kid, and shows the spoiled kid going from table to table, like, grabbing stuff. And that's when the manager walks over to the spoiled kid's parents and says, hey, guys, you got to control your kid. And they're like, hey, well, like, we've been trying to. He's been so bad. And the manager's like, I, like I, 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 and I mean no disrespect or anything, but if you can't control him, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to ask all of you to leave. And the thing is, the spoiled kid heard this. And the spoiled kid is like, you can't tell me to do anything. And the manager is like, I'm the manager of this restaurant. If you don't keep, if you continue to take stuff from people and you don't sit down and eat the dinner like everyone else with your parents, I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. I think it's a pretty fair request. And the spoiled kid gets super angry. He's like, you can't tell me what to do. So the spoiled kid runs away, right? And his parents are like, I'm so sorry. I'll go get him. However, they're not expecting what's about to happen next. And what's about to happen next is that the spoiled kid, bro, the spoiled kid starts running around and like he takes a, like one of the salt and pepper shakers and chucks it through the window. And the window apparently was like, it was like one of those like glass panel things. It wasn't like a big thick window. It goes right through the glass panel, shatters. And the glass shattering noise is enough to get everyone's attention in the restaurant. So they all turn their heads and they're looking over and they're just like, uh, like what's going on here? And everyone turns and they look at the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid, is literally just standing there. Like, he is just standing there watching everyone watch him, and he's next to a big thing of broken glass. And the manager angrily turns to his parents and is like, if you don't control your kid and get him out of here, I'm going to call the police to do that for them. And the parents are like, he's just a kid. Why would you call the police? Shattered glass noise number two. And they look over, and they see the spoil kid has taken a stool and thrown it through a normal glass window which is insane, right? And they're like, okay, point proven. So the two so the two parents run over to the spoiled kid and are like, sweetie, we need to go home. And the spoiled kid's like, no, mom and dad, I do what I want because I can do anything. This is my world. And he literally just continues. He takes another chair and his dad is like, spoiled kid, if we go back home, we can get ice cream. And spoiled kid's like, of course we're getting ice cream when we go home. When you take me home, I'm going to get ice cream no matter what. But I want to keep doing what I'm doing right now. So at this point, right, uh, you know, Clarence looks over and sees the manager literally going over and, like, calling the police at this point. He sees the manager being like, ah, nah, bro, this is not happening, not in my restaurant. And so sure enough, right, you know, he calls the police and at this point, the spoiled kid and his parents are like, okay, come on, spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid's like, not today. And he takes his, like, takes another, like, chair, throws it through another window. At this point, right, a lot of people are getting up to leave because this is ridiculous. And sure enough, right, the police do arrive. And the spoiled kid doesn't see the police. And he picks up another chair when he feels a bit of resistance. Like, there's someone else tugging on the chair. The spoiled kid thinks it's his dad. He's like, don't try and stop me, dad. And he turns around and he's looking directly at an officer who is holding onto the chair. And he's like, oh, oh my God. He drops the chair and he runs away, but he runs over to the exit, which is the door. And who do you think is standing in the door? Another officer. And he starts crying. He's like, it wasn't me. It was my parents and that kid. And he points over to Clarence, the subscriber. And Clarence is like, bro, What? You took fries from me and now you're blaming me for causing damages at a restaurant. Anyways, police officers are told by the, like the, the manager, no, it was this kid. And so anyways, police officers, the manager, the parents, and this kid are all standing around. And they're basically just talking about damages, like how it's going to be settled, how all of that. Basically, the restaurant is, one, banning them from ever coming back, and two, sending them a bill for, uh, you know, the damages done to the window. And the cops basically say, like, hey, like, you know, the manager said that, you know, he's not going to press any charges or have any police action against your son, so he won't be going to juvie or anything like that or 
be on watch or something, but like, you need to be a better parent. And they're like, I know. And with that, they left. And like, basically most people at this point had left. Clarence and his parents had finished eating and they were paying the check. And Clarence just looked over and man, bro, bro just saw like a massive, like, he just saw a massive pile of glass, bro. He just saw a massive pile of glass. And uh, yeah, you know, the moral of the story is if you're a parent, like sometimes you got to be forceful. Some, I mean, not physically, but sometimes you got to put your foot down and not let your kid run you because they'll turn into something like that. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and watch another video after, after this one. Click on the video one. on screen you, right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we get a story of a spoiled kid who burns down a restaurant because he is big mad. Uh, yeah, it is a very interesting story. I'll know you, you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted this story, Alex. By the way, this story is also on Spotify. It's the first link in the description. Please rate it five stars if you do listen to the podcast on there. It's these stories, but you also get the stories like a couple hours early if you follow on Spotify. Anyways, so Alex was going on a date, right? And you know, Alex hadn't been going, had not had a date for a while. She just didn't really have the best luck when it came to this stuff. But all of a sudden she was just like on Tinder or Match or one of those dating apps. And she got like, you know, she matched with this guy who we're gonna call Steve. And Alex right away was pretty excited because you know, Steve wasn't a bad looking guy. He seemed like, I don't know, he had good photos with friends, a photo with his mom. He kind of seemed like a nice, wholesome, and somewhat attractive guy. So Alex was pretty excited for all this. Alex and Steve talked a little bit in the Tinder DM section, and, you know, she was all like, oh, like, do you want to, or he said, do you want to go out tonight? And she didn't have anything to do, and she hadn't been on a date in a while. So Alex, you know, very excitedly and enthusiastically said, yeah, yeah, I would like to go on a date. That sounds great. And, you know, Alex is like, hey, or Steve is like, hey, you should come to the blah, blah, blah restaurant on like Fifth Avenue or something like that. And it was like a really fancy restaurant. And, you know, Alex was like, oh, wow, I guess this guy's kind of a baller too. Like, all right, like W for Alex, love to see it. So Alex, you know, getting ready and she's excited and she's still chatting with Steve a little bit, just like flirting it up a little bit. And this guy actually has some pretty good game. He's, you know, he seems like a nice guy, not not like r slash nice guys, fedora wear a nice guy, but like an actual nice, like a nice dude who like she's excited to go on a date with who's pretty good looking and probably making that bread by the by the restaurant suggestion, you know? And, uh, you know, Alex is like, okay, like this is pretty great. And she gets all ready, she's excited, and she shows up to the restaurant, and she shows up, like, ten minutes early, because they have, like, a reservation. She's like, I just want to be there first so that, like, you know, I can see him coming and I don't get caught off guard or anything. Like, I just want to be there prepared. So Alex says, gets there, like, ten minutes early, goes up to the front desk, and is like, hey, like, uh, a reservation for Steve, I think? And, or Steve for two, and she looks down, she said, yeah, okay, come right this way, the table's ready. So the waiter leads Alex over to the table, it's, you know, it's a table with a view of, like, really, like, the city that they're in, wherever that may be, not gonna disclose anything, and it's really beautiful, and she's like, wow, this is awesome. So she sits down, and it's a, it's a restaurant with a lot of other people, but it's a pretty fancy restaurant. Alex got dressed up in, like, a nice dress and all that good stuff, and sure enough, She's sitting around, waiting. She looks at her phone, and it, it's 6 o'clock. It's the time that he's supposed to be there, that they were supposed to meet. And Alex is, like, looking at it, and 6.01, she's like, okay, whatever. No big deal. Like, that's totally fine. Like, okay, that's, that's chill. We're, we're, we're cool. We're cool. And it's 6.05. She's like, ah, you know, good to be uh, fashionably late, I guess. I guess. 6.10, and she's like, Oh no, like, I definitely just got stood up. And Alex is, like, so upset about it, so disappointed. And that's when this guy comes, like, strutting, strut, strutting in at 612 and sits down. He's like, hey, Alex, right? It's Steve. What's good? And Steve was all, like, disheveled looking. He was, like, I mean, he was all dressed up in a fancy suit, but it was, like, thrown on last minute. His hair was all around the place. Like, his shirt was unbuttoned a little bit too much. It was all ruffled up. 
he kind of smelled a little musty from even even far away. He had like you know twelve o'clock shadow. Like it it was just like she was like oh in her head she's like ah, looks a little different in his photos, doesn't he? <laughs> You should always FaceTime someone on, like, if, if you match with someone on Tinder, try and get them on a FaceTime call before you meet them in person, just to make sure you're getting the real deal. Little pro tip from me. So anyways, Steve's like, oh, yeah, no, you'll love this place. Like, it's so good. Like, my dad brings me here all the time. I go here with the boys. It's awesome. And Alex is like, haha, he also sounds different over text. The way I imagined him to be was a little bit more Prince Charming-y. I guess that's on me. And, you know, Steve's like, yeah, so, yeah, I'll probably just get, like, the flight. Like, you can get whatever I want. It's, it's on my dad's card, so it really doesn't matter. Get what you want. And Alex is like, ah, so he's not a baller. He just has infinite resources at his disposal because he won the genetic lottery. Okay, good to know. This, this is not turning out exactly how I thought it would. And so, anyways, like, Steve is like, eh, yeah. All this looks bad. So many vegetables. Alex... Being a vegetarian is like, yeah, isn't that the worst? <laughs> so right away, this is already a disaster of a date because she thought that she was going on, you know, a date with Prince Charming, but instead she's going on a date with basically spoiled kid grown up. I've told a lot of stories of spoiled kids when they're like in elementary school or grade school. This is the spoiled kid, but like when he's 22, bro. Like, this is the spoiled kid if he grows up. So think of this as, like, the prequels to my spoiled kid story times. Let me know if you like these kind of older ones, too, and I'll, I'll make sure to do some of them. But anyways, right, so Alex is like, okay, just survive the date. He's paying for it. You know, get a nice meal. Maybe dig down deep, and you'll find this guy's actually cool. But worst comes to worst, you get a good meal, and then you leave. However, that was not worst comes to worst, because the worst comes to worst was the title of this video, which you, you'll see in just a second. So, the, spo so the, the waiter comes over, and the spoiled kid is like, yeah, I want this. And she's like, okay, like, that's, that's totally fine. Alex says, like, oh, I want that. And Steve's like, dude, that's the lamest thing on the menu, because Alex got some, like, she's a vegetarian. She got, like, the vegetable option. And Alex kind of just looks at Steve. He's like, oh, my, oh, my fault. Don't sweat it. Like, don't take it personally. I just, like, I'm always joshing around, bro. Like, don't even worry about it. Alex is like, yeah, no, I'll have the, uh. I'll have the vegetable bake. That sounds good. And Steve's like, <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> and Alex is like, okay, just going to go through this. It's fine. Life is okay. And see, and so the waiter goes away and Steve's like, so you want to hear about my vacation? Alex is like, uh -uh. in her head, she's like, okay, so this is normally when we, we just ask each other a little bit more about e each other, right? We just talk a little bit more. We get to know each other. It's a back and forth, but Sure, I want to hear about your vacation. So the spoiled kid, or a.k.a. Steve, is like, yeah, so I was vacationing with uh, my parents. We took, or with my, uh, with my dad. We took a, a little uh, mega super yacht over to Mykonos. It was pretty fire. And we went, we went clubbing every single night. And dude, Alex, you're not going to believe it. I got with so many beautiful women. And Alex is like, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. So, right, she's sitting there, and her date is saying, yo, I'm getting, I got with all these beautiful women. I just want to make sure that you are aware of that. Like, bro, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's the thing you say to your date. But, okay, anyways, and he's like, yeah. Then I went back home. I went to the club again, like my dad, you know, he just gives me his like, his like, uh, you know, the, the Centurion card from American Express. So, it, you know, that thing's like metal and he takes it out and he kind of like dinks it and glints his glass. He goes, bing, bing, bing. He's like, yeah, dude, like this thing is crazy. You just go to a club and you drop it down and they'll give you anything. Like I, th I got the craziest bottles of champagne ever. And like I was spraying them over these girls and they were, and Alex is like, okay, just zone out because <laughs> this is not not going as i expected and he's like so and steve then goes so so alex tell me about yourself like what's up and she's like oh uh, um because he'd been sp speaking about his like super crazy mega yacht vacation for like the last 10 minutes and alex is like oh yeah so you know i work at a, a coffee shop i'm a vegetarian i love cats and you can just see that Steve is completely glazed out. He's not paying attention to a thing. And that's when Steve takes out his phone. 
and does it like discreetly check it because look if you're discreetly on your phone taking a little look while someone's talking to you yeah you should be pretty good friends with them and you should make a brief because you know good to have eye contact human conversation human co like human connection is important in these things but like this like this guy was just like had the phone on the table was scrolling through like instagram right and, and the thing was in the middle of alex speaking literally bro he go he goes on tiktok and is listening to tiktoks bro he just is like it's like renegade run and while well, she's trying to talk and uh, one of the times the TikTok comes up, she's explaining to him, like, oh, this is what I do for work. And he goes, like, <laughs> he's, like, the worst freaking laugh ever. This kid has, like, you know, he might have been blessed with a ton of money, but he was cursed with a terrible laugh. And a really loud one, too. And Alex just kind of stops talking, because, bro, this kid is on TikTok, he sounds something funny, and he bursts out laughing when she's explaining, yeah, ever since my mother died, he's like, <laughs> it's just the worst timing ever. She's like, you know what? You know what? No, I'm not going to continue this conversation. I'm speaking to a brick wall right now. So she kind of stops talking. Steve's like, wait, why'd you stop? And Alex is like, oh, I was just catching my breath. So she continues to go on. She's like, and so the other thing, <laughs> And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, this is the worst date I have ever been on. And that's when it gets somehow, it, it somehow gets worse. Like you have to realize this date sounds terrible so far, but it only continues to get worse. Cause Steve is like, hey, can I tell you a secret? She's like, yeah. Steve's like, yo, turn around, but be discreet. And so Alex turns around and she sees, you know, this, like this girl and this guy sitting at another table. She's like, okay. Alex is like, yo, that's my ex. We broke off like a, and like 12 hours ago. Alex is like, you broke up with your ex 12 hours ago? And she's sitting right there? And Steve's like, yeah, like I was doing some snooping and I figured out that she was coming on. She was coming here tonight with a new date and I just had to book it with a date. And Alex at this point is like, wait a minute. I I'm just being set up. I'm just being used at this point to try and make this other girl jealous. So Alex just looks at him. It's like, Steve. He's like, yeah, what's good? What's up? He's like, did you just bring me here to make another girl jealous? Steve's like, uh, I mean, like, no. I want to go on a date with you. It just happened that my ex-girlfriend from 12 hours ago, who I was stalking and figured out that she would be here at this exact time in this exact restaurant... Uh, and I just happened to be here with my new girlfriend, uh, and she's like, girlfriend? Uh, uh, no, it's a coincidence, Alex. I just want to go on a date with you. Like, can you just get over the fact that, like, my ex is here? Wow, you're so jealous. And Alex is like, I don't care. It just seems a little weird that, like, you planned this out. He's like, no, it's a total coincidence, even though he literally just admitted to it not being a coincidence. But anyways, Alex is like, okay. This food is taking forever. I wish this was fast food so I could eat my meal and go. And as she was saying that, the waiter comes over with uh, both the meals. And Alex got, like, the meat lover's dead animal surprise or whatever. And she got the vegetable loaf. So she was kind of just looking at him like, mm, mm, mm. But sure enough, right, she was eating it. And Alex was like, so, like, do you want to try some? And he, like, pushes over his big meat lover surprise. And she's like, I'm a vegetarian. Which she said, like, seven times. Like, she said it while she was ordering. She explained, like, what in her life brought her to that point. Because, like, she had to explain, like, stuff about her life. And he's like, oh, well, I mean, you're still a vegetarian if you eat a little bit of meat. And Alex is like, no, it's, that's not how it works. At least, at least not for me. And he's like, come on, just have a little bite. And Alex takes up, like, takes a fork, sticks it into, like, a piece of steak, starts, like, pushing it in her face. She's like, please get that away from me. Please. Like, please. And, and he's like, what? I I are you a snowflake? Is this meat making you triggered? <laughs> and she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This guy's literally the worst. And then Alex is like, okay, I'm bored with you. Or not, yeah, it's Alex, it's Steve. And Steve's like, hey, Kate. And Kate's the ex-girlfriend at the other table. And Kate whips her head around. She's like, what is it, Ale What is it, Steve? And at this point, right, Steve and Kate, Steve's ex-girlfriend, 
are just bickering back and forth. And he's like, oh, look who's on a new date now, Kate. Like, does this make you jealous? And Kate's like, I don't know if you remembered, but I broke up with you and I'm on a date. You happen to stalk me, figure out exactly when I'm coming, and just pick up some random girl on Tinder to be your quote-unquote date. And, you know, at this point, like, Steve is like, N -uh. that's that's like totally not how it went. You're just like making stuff up right now. It's so embarrassing for you. It's so embarrassed. I I'm embarrassed on your behalf. At this point, like, St Steve is like, tears are welling up in his eyes. It's like when your younger brother loses the it loses the fight. So he's like, no, you're wrong. And he cries and goes to his room. Mom, he's hitting me. I don't even have a younger brother, but I've just seen that happen so often. And sure enough, right, you know, Alex is just sitting there and is like, okay, this is not how I was envisioning my night. Because remember, she saw this guy on Tinder with wonderful photos and, uh, you know, he was eloquent, eloquent in his, you know, his responses. He was, you know, he was so good. And then from those little bits, you know, she kind of imagined a totally different guy. I mean, by totally different, I kind of just mean that one is who isn't terrible, right? But Alex thinks that the date right now is going bad. She's not a fan of how it's going. However, little does she know, it's about to get a lot worse. Real quick, comment spoiled down below if you made it this far into the video. Uh, the secret word of the day is spoiled. I'll try and hard a bunch of comments to say spoiled down below. And also, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is make sure to continue watching videos after this one, or at some point within the day, just sit down and watch a bunch of videos. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you're doing while watching these videos and or how many videos you watch today. I am genuinely curious. Also, I made a Twitter account and something very cool can happen, but we need to get to a thousand followers. So my Twitter is Connor Pugs. It's in the description. It has like 200 followers right now. I would love to get it to a thousand. Also, if you enjoy watching these or listening to these on the go, please check out the Spotify as on Spotify, you'll actually get access to these story times two, one to two hours before they go up on a lot of occasions, not always, but if you want kind of like a sneak peek of the stories, go to Spotify, follow, turn on notifications and rate five stars if you can. And finally, if you want to submit stories and very soon, like right now, go to my Instagram, Connor Pugs and DM me. Or go to my Twitter. I'm going to be opening up my DMs pretty soon, and you can DM me stories on there as well. Anyways, let's just get back to it. Use code as Connor Pugs for 10% off gamer subs. Link in the description. Helps you out, helps me out. Let's just get back to the crazy date, because this is really bad. So Alex is sitting there. At this point, Steve and his ex, Kate, are just, like, bickering back and forth. And Alex kind of looks at the, like, the guy that, you know, Kate is on, like, a, a date with as well, and they kind of look at each other and kind of shrug and be like, what's going on? Like, I'm, hey, man, you and I, you and I are both in this together, bro. Like, this is crazy. And so sure enough, right, what probably happened was that, like, Kate was angry about the breakup and spiteful and just found a random dude on Tinder and decided to go out and also made it very clear to, like, Steve that she was going out with, like, a random dude to a restaurant. And, like, she probably put it on her story, like, just made a gr met a great guy on Tinder. We're going to the 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 rich minion, <laughs> the rich minion restaurant at six tonight. It's gonna be so great. Um, I don't think there's a restaurant called Rich Minion. If there was, I would be there immediately. I also saw disp I also saw saw Minions two in the movie theater. Ten out of ten would recommend. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, I unironically love that stuff. Anyways, though, so, you know, at this point, Steve is starting to get really, really angry. He's like, I don't like you at all, Kate. And she's like, good. That's why I'm going on a date with another person. And they're basically shouting back and forth. And, you know, the manager comes over and he's like, hello, everybody. My name is Markable. I'm just kidding. He's like, hello, everybody. Uh, what's going on over here? Like, uh, can we please, you know, I'm glad that everyone around here is such good friends and is having a great conversation with each other, but can we please quiet it down a little bit? Just a little bit, please? Just a little bit? Ha <laughs> ha. And the manager walks away. At this point, Steve and Kate turn back to their people, or Steve turns back to Alex, Kate turns back to her Tinder date, and they're sitting there, and Alex is just looking at Steve, and she's like, so... 
that was something. And Steve's like, yeah, my ex is the worst. She keeps following me around and is trying to make me jealous. And Kate's like, well, I mean, uh, can you be jealous? Like, I mean, you guys broke up. Are you still into her? He's like, maybe. And Kate's like, okay, I, I don't think we should be on a date anymore. He's like, wait, you're not break. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to break up with me too. You can't break up with me as well. And Alex is like, what are you saying? What? No. Um, well, what do you mean break up with you? He's like, nobody wants to stay with me. They all leave. And Alex is like, calm down, calm down. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. And immediately Steve like goes back to like, good, perfect. Like he, like the tears literally went back up into the tear ducts. It was crazy. Okay, not, not actually, but you know what I mean. And sure enough, right, Alex is like, okay. He's obviously manipulating me, but you know what? I'm going to get dessert here. It's on his dad's dime, so I'm getting dessert here. Like, I don't care. Like, that's totally fine. So they get the dessert menu, and, you know, they order something, and, you know, Steve is sitting there, <laughs> and Steve is just, like, completely disinterested in Alex. Like, literally just paying no attention to her. And Alex finds that kind of annoying. You know, he, he like, Steve is uh, just looking over at Kate, talking with her new boyfriend, and Kate turns around, sees that Steve is looking at her, and she, like, puts her hand on her new Tinder date's boyfriend hand. Tinder date's boyfriend. Her, her new boyfriend, the Tinder date's hand. There we go. And see, Al, Steve literally takes his fist and pounds it on the table. And when he does this, the glass of red wine that Alex ordered falls over and spills on her. And she's like, oh my god. Steve looks over and it's like, my fault, and then turns back to looking at Kate. Bro, and Alex is like, a anything? Do you want to say anything else? Do you want to offer to help or something? And Steve's like, what? You just spilled wine all over yourself. And she's like, oh my god. She's like, no, it was on the table. You pounded your fist because you're mad that Kate is with another guy, and it spilled all over me, right? And so Kate grabs a napkin and, you know, Steve is like, I'm not mad. That no, you got that wrong. I don't care that Kate's with another guy. I mean, we broke up. It was mutual. Oh, no, no, no. She's broke. I'm up. Oh, roast. And Kate's like, dude, or uh, Alex is like, dude, that wasn't like a roast. You didn't. Get He's like, shh, 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 shh. silence. He's like, no, I don't care that Kate's with another guy. I don't care at all. I'm a big boy. It's what my dad said. Love you, daddy. But no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm fine. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, I care a little bit, but not like enough that anyone would. Be and Alex is like, all right, you know what? You know what, Steve? I, I think I'm done here. Like, thank you for taking me out. We had a nice conversation, but this has gone way too far. He's like, no, no, no. I want it to, I want you to stay. I want it. I want it, I want it, I want it. I want you to stay. No going, no. That's not what I want. And Alex is like, are you okay? Are you having a mental breakdown right now? Like, why are you shouting, no, I want it, I want it, I want you to stay, you must, I need it. He's like, no, 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 no. You can't go anywhere. And Alex is like, I'm sorry, like, I, I have my own autonomy. <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> That's so tough. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I don't understand. I'm going. Like, Alex stands up, still has all these, like, red wine stains in her. She's like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm gonna go. Goodbye. And he's like, no, I don't think you are. And he literally starts slamming his, like, fist on the table. And Kate turns around and starts laughing. And she's like, can't hold down a date, Steve. Can't hold down a date. Just so you know, the greatest thing was me after all. That's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying, Steve. Get wrecked, bro. Okay, I don't know if she said get wrecked, bro, but you understand the gist of what I'm trying to say, right? And Steve is so angry. He's like, you know what? You know what? And he grabs, uh, like, the candle. So they have, like, in some, in some restaurants, they have the fake candles. You know what I'm talking about, like, the fake, like, lighted candles. But some of them, like, some of the fancy ones, too, have, like, real candles. And he takes a real candle, he's like, I don't care anymore. And he just chucks the candle, right? And, f and just, like, starts, he, like, kicks over, like, the plate on his table, and he chucks the candle, and he's, like, screaming. However, he didn't realize when he chucked the candle, 
What he actually did was he chucked the candle onto the drapes, the thin but very flammable drapes, and immediately they catch. But no one notices at first. They just see a little smoke because, like, you know, it doesn't explode in the flames. It's not dipped in gasoline or something, right? But sure enough, right, you know, eventually, you know, Alex is watching the whole thing with Steve and Kate go down, and that's when uh, Kate's Tinder date's like, Hey, everyone, I was like, turn around, look, look, look. And all three of them turn around and they look at the uh, curtains, which have all completely caught on fire. And the fire is now quickly spreading. So at this point, right, they all turn around. They're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So they all get up. They all walk away from it. And that's when, like, you know, Alex is like, we got to go find someone. So Alex runs, finds the manager. He's, like, standing around the front desk. He's like, there's a fire. There's a fire going on. So immediately, you know, 911 was called. The whole restaurant was evacuated. And, like, Alex and Steve walk out, and Alex is like, I-, I think I should just go home, right? And Steve's like, wait, so you're not coming back to my place? And she's like, no, of course I'm not coming back to your place. Steve's like, okay, well, you have my number if you change your mind tonight. Like, you're like, oh, my God, that Steve guy was so great. I'm so sad that I was an idiot and decided not to go back to his place right away. I guess I'm going to be crawling back to him on my knees. <laughs> okay. Alex is like, you know what, Steve, that, that won't be happening, but I, I, thanks for looking out for me, bud. If that happens, thanks for looking out for me. I, I really appreciate it. He's like, oh, no problem, dude. Like, I got you. And so Alex very angrily walks away. And, you know, the next day comes around. Alex is checking the local news, and sure enough, it was like there was an article about, like, the fire damage or whatever. But apparently they said that they had no idea what caused the fire. Police were investigating it, but the restaurant sustained some pretty bad internal damage. But, it, like, the, it, it would be fixed up in, like, a month or something. Which is detrimental for anyone in the restaurant business, by the way. I don't know if they went out of business or not. But anyways, Alex met up with one of her friends the next day. They went out for coffee. They sit down. And Alex is like to her friend, because her friend's like, anything new? And she's like, so you might think that you have a bad date story. But I truly have the worst date story. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have three stories of spoiled kids getting owned by the teacher. All of them are great, and I know you will enjoy them. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's get into the first story where we're going to call the subscriber Finn. By the way, if you want to submit stories, submit them to my Twitter account, at Connor Pugs. It's in the description. With that being said, let's just jump right into it. So anyways, anyways, right, man, I can't speak. Anyways, Finn is a college student. And uh, he's currently in a college uh, math class. And in this college math class, there's a kid who's kind of just like known as a kid who's pre-spoiled, like one of those kind of like entitled kids. And I don't mean someone who necessarily, I don't know, has like really rich parents or something like that, or, you know, has more things provided for them so that they're like a little bit inconsiderate, they're a little bit arrogant, because they're definitely people that, you know, just don't know any better. Like they'll, they'll do some, they'll just kind of assume certain things are like the normal for other people, but it's not. And I, I don't really consider those people like spoiled brats or whatever. Th- that's just like, I, I don't know. That's uh, obviously, it's not the greatest thing. It's better to be aware of your surroundings. But when I mean spoiled kid, I mean like, comes in, flexes his double wrists when iced out Rolexes, like drops his Amex black card on the table. Is like, oh yeah, I'm self-made when he literally has never worked a job in his life. But anyways, so this kid, we're just going to call him the spoiled kid. And there was a pretty big test in the math class. And there was basically two major tests for this college semester. And the grade was basically 50% the first test 50% the second test. It was a brutal way to grade the class, but it was also somewhat easy in a sense because if you just studied for the first test or you just, if you just studied really well for these two assignments, you got 100 in the course. You didn't have to show up any of the days at all except the days of the test if you really wanted to, but it's really hard if you're struggling the subject. Anyways, so about halfway through the semester, it is the first test. It's the first assessment. And uh, Finn is sitting in this college class. He's been studying for weeks at this point, and he's really nervous. I mean, I could totally understand where he's coming from. I would be personally terrified myself. And so in walks the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid just kind of has this attitude to him. This kind of has this kind of like, I don't know, he's just like super confident, super just full of himself. And you could kind you could kind of tell, right? So the spoiled kid sits right in front of uh, Finn. And so the teacher passes around the test, is like, all right, you guys have two hours to finish this. 
Um, you are cut. You may finish early. In fact, I inspe- I expect almost all of you to finish this before the two hours. I gave about one hour worth of material, so you know if, if it takes you, mo- it should not take you more than two hours. And uh, everyone may begin. And sure enough, everyone whips out like starts writing down. Finn is kind of nervous because he's feeling okay about the test, but I don't know if you guys have taken a math test before, and you're going through it and you're like, yeah, I think I got the right answer. The worst thing is when you think you got the right answer, you don't know you got the right answer. Like, you get an answer, and it's, like, not a super clean number, comes out as a bunch of decimal points, and you're like, okay, that doesn't seem good. But who knows? But the thing was, Finn looked in front of him, and the spoiled kid was sitting there. And the spoiled kid was sitting there, and, you know, he had his backpack. And his backpack... He, the spoiled kid began to reach into his backpack. Finn, being easily distracted, started paying attention to the spoiled kid. And he watch, and he looks as the spoiled kid reaches into the backpack and kind of just assumes that, oh, okay, whatever, right? The spoiled kid is just reaching in for a pencil, maybe an eraser, maybe a piece of scratch paper, which would have been a little sus, but whatever. But instead, the spoiled kid reaches into his backpack and grabs an iPad, not his phone, not like something small, a whole on iPad, not an iPad mini, a full iPad, right? And he takes out the iPad and he puts it on his lap. To be fair, it was a somewhat discreet position. It was not super obvious that there was an iPad on his, on his lap. But the spoiled kid opens up the iPad and literally goes to Safari, the Google search engine on iPads. And he opens it up and he starts typing. He goes to like, like he starts typing in the questions into Google and just getting the answers. Like sometimes he has to like literally search through message boards like Reddit or I don't know. Okay, they wouldn't use Stack Overflow, it's a math class. But they'd be searching through stuff like, I don't know, Reddit, Wolfram Alpha, all these sites or whatever. And he was like finding the answers every single time. And at this point, right, you know, uh, Finn was looking at him. He's like, this kid's crazy. Dude's gonna get caught. There's not a chance that dude doesn't get caught. Like, are you kidding me? You, you can't be, like, you, you cannot be serious here. And sure enough, right, you know, the spoiled kid is, uh, you know, he's, you know, just going along, like, da, 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 just going through writing down his answers. And Finn is kind of distracted now, is watching as the math teacher, who is at the front of the class, just kind of like grading stuff, gets up to just casually walk around. Because I don't know about you, but when I have tests, sometimes the teacher just decides to stroll around. Sometimes the teacher wants to see, you know, what other people are doing and how they're doing and just making sure that they're not blatantly cheating like the spoiled kid is here. So Finn, like, quickly puts his eyes back on his own paper because he doesn't want to be accused of, like, looking at the spoiled kid's work or anything. But he he just, he can't concentrate right now because he knows for a fact that the spoiled kid is about to be outed as a big old cheater, right? And so sure enough, you know, the, the teacher walks around and he, the thing is, the teacher is kind of going, doing a snake pattern throughout the desks. So instead of going for, like, instead of approaching the spoiled kid front on, he approaches, approaches the spoiled kid from the back, which maybe if the teacher started one row earlier and he would have ended up approaching the spoiled kid from the front, the spoiled kid would have noticed that someone was approaching him and he would have either turned off the iPad or at least stopped using it actively. But unfortunately for the spoiled kid, you know, the teacher was approaching from behind. And as the teacher got closer and closer, the teacher ended up passing by Finn and stopping right next to Finn's desk. Not, of course, to like look at what Finn was doing, but to observe the spoiled kid who was sitting one desk ahead of Finn. The spoiled kid was very clearly going on his iPad, typing on it, scrolling through to find answers, and then writing on like his test. And the teacher is like, under his breath, he's like, Spoiled kid, what are you doing? Obviously says the actual name of the spoiled kid, but it's like, spoiled kid, it, are, are you cheating? And the spoiled kid's like, looks up, turns around, t- shuts off the iPad, and is like, uh, no, I'm not cheating. And, you know, the teacher's like, well, what, what, what were you doing with that iPad? And the spoiled kid's like, um, well, I just had it out. And, you know, the teacher's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Even if you just have your phone, like I made it very clear in the beginning of class, you cannot have any sort of device out. Like, even if you weren't cheating, we would have no way to know if you were or weren't, and we just have to assume you are. The spoiled kid's like, 
Well, I'm just going to finish this test. Like, I mean, you can take this iPad if you want. It was just lying around. And the thing was, like, Finn knew that the teacher was watching the spoiled kid cheating on the iPad actively. It's not like, I don't know, the spoiled kid forgot to put the iPad away and it just happened to be out. It was on and he was using it. And then he just like turns it off as soon as the teacher asks him what he's doing. And the teacher's like, no, I can't do that. Like, I need to take your test now. I'm sorry. I have to mark it as a zero, which first of all is devastating. That is absolutely devastating because, you know, 50% of your grade is a zero. You cannot pass that class. I don't care if you get 100% on your other test. I don't care if you get 100% and 10% with extra credit. You are not passing that class. So at this point, the spoiled kid who definitely doesn't want to like have to redo the class again is like, uh, I don't think so. I'm going to finish this test and like, I'm going to hand it to you and you're going to grade it. And the teacher is like, bro, and his head is like, you're talking back to me. And Finn is starting to be like, oh my God, like I'm going to need two whole, I'm going to need the whole two hours to finish this test because I can't pay attention for the life of me. And the teacher's like, are you talking back to me? And at this whole time in the beginning, the teacher and the spoiled kid were kind of whisper fighting back and forth. But now the teacher full on said in his full voice, are you talking back to me? And like the whole class turns and looks, right? The whole test has been derailed. And the spoiled kid's like, you know, if I were you, I would be careful, Mr. Teacher. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing you got to know. You know, the teachers who cross me and cross me bad, you know, my dad knows a person or two on the board. They know a person or two, right? And the thing is, if I give my dad a word that you, sir, are being, you know, mischievous. <laughs> okay, I don't think he said mischievous, though. I don't think that's the word choice. But if you, sir, are messing with me, bro, then I don't know. Maybe you're going to have to find a new job. I mean, I heard McDonald's is hiring, bro. At this point, the teacher and the spoiled kid, it's like a 1v1 face-off right now. They're both looking at each other. They both very much dislike each other at this point, And they're kind of just having a bit of a stare-off. And at this point, that you, I, Finn could basically, he, if Finn had a butter knife on him, he could cut the tension in the room right in half. And the teacher looks at him and takes one step closer to the spoiled kid. Because the one thing the spoiled kid did not know was that this teacher was not any old teacher. This teacher has been at the school for so many years. This teacher is doesn't just have tenure. He is like tenure plus, bro. He has like the next version of tenure. This guy is entrenched in the establishment of this school. This guy is like whatever connections his dad has or whatever kind of donor this dad has, it will not have any impact. And the teacher goes up to him, if a spoiled kid, and says, do it. Call your dad and tell him to fire me. Do it. I dare you. In this point, the spoiled kid's face went from, like, a smug smile to complete shock and horror because, like, he was convinced that this would be enough for, the, for you know, the, the teacher to fold. Apparently, this has worked every other time the spoiled kid has done it. So the spoiled kid was like, oh, my, well, like, he's, he's not taking it? Sitting down? What? Real quick comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. I'm going to try and heart as many comments as I can. And if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is continue watching videos after this one. You can do them by looking in the recommended section for other videos, or you can go to my channel page, which has playlists. I have playlists for spoil kids, high school stories, uh, Karen videos, whatever you want. It's there. And uh, by the way, if you like watching these videos on the go, I have a Spotify. It is first link in the description. It's called, or just look up Connor Pugs on Spotify. And please, if you do listen on there, rate it five stars and follow me. And even if you like, you know, I don't know if you're a huge Spotify guy, as an incentive, there, every episode is put up about an hour or two early on there. So if you want a sneak peek, go to my Spotify. And finally, use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off gamer subs. It helps you. It helps me submit stories to either my Instagram or Twitter account. And join the Discord server. A lot of you guys don't know we have one. It's in the description. With that, all that promo out of the way, let's get back into it. So Finn is sitting there as the spoiled kid versus the teacher, are they're facing off, right? And the teacher just dropped a bomb, basically called the spoiled kid's bluff and said, sure, go ahead and do it. And the spoiled kid at this point basically knows he's in defeat. So the, the spoiled kid is just like completely frozen. 
Because remember, the spoiled kid has probably used this line in other classes where he's like, oh, well, you know what? Uh, my dad knows a lot of trustees. My dad can totally sue you. My dad can get you out of the school. Do you want a job? And look, as much as the teachers want to ho- uphold integrity and a good learning environment, they also want to eat. You know what I mean? They also want to eat. So I kind of get it. But at this point, this teacher has been around for so long that he knows that, you know, this spoiled kid's dad, I don't care if he donated the school building, he's not doing anything, bro. Because that building has already been donated and they don't need another one. So at this point, the spoiled kid watches as the teacher goes over, goes on his desk, grabs his paper and walks to the front of the class. And the spoiled kid is shouting like, I'm giving you one more chance. I'm giving you one more chance or I'm going to call my dad and he's going to get you fired. You know how much money my dad has. You know how many, you know how, how much donation ability he has. You know who does know? The school. The school knows. And the teacher turns around and says, son, I've been here for 40 years. I know everyone in like who works here. I guarantee you, tell your dad to make that call. And tell him that you were cheating in my class and that I caught you. And if that's the reason I get fired, then that's the way I go out. So at this point, the entire class has been derailed. And the spoiled kid gets up. He gets out of his chair. He says, you know what? We'll see about that. And he gets up and he walks out of the class. So the teacher is like, all right, class. I, I'm, I apologize for the distraction. You guys will be, unless you have other events, and then you can work that out with me. I'm tacking on another 15 minutes at the end of class just in case someone goes that far. So sure enough, right, uh, you know, uh, Finn continues the test. He goes about an hour, 30 minutes in. When he completes it, he feels pretty good about it. And uh, the aftermath of what happens is the spoiled kid never returns to the class. The spoiled kid fails the class but drops it, so it's, like, not part of his grade or something. And, yeah, so, yeah, the the spoiled kid did complain to the dad. And uh, the teacher was never fired. So, yeah, that just shows you that just because your dad donates a lot of money doesn't mean that you can cheat in class. We're going to call the subscriber for the next story of a teacher owning a spoiled kid, Jake. So anyways, Jake is in the, th- is in the third kid. Uh, the third kid. Jake is in the third grade, guys. And there's also a spoiled kid, right? There is a spoiled kid in the class. And the thing is, you know, Jake comes from a lower-income family. You know, he, you know, he isn't afforded all the newest stuff. You know, sometimes, you know, the meals he has, like, aren't the greatest. Sometimes he has to wear the same clothes again and again. Sometimes, you know, he he has to, you know, walk to school, which makes him a bit late because his mom can't bring him in. This happens. The spoiled kid, right? And once again, just because, like, you have more money doesn't inherently make you a bad person. If you feel entitled and you feel like you are just a, a better person because you have more money, then, yeah, maybe you're not so great, right? So sure enough... Uh, the Jake, so Jake and the spoiled kid, you know, they're, they're sitting down and the spoiled kid just blatantly starts like making fun of Jake. Cause remember they're in third grade and the spoiled kid's like, mm, Jake, you're smelling so bad today. And the thing was, right. Jake just didn't, he, he, he had to wear these clothes again. You know, he didn't have time to wash them. He didn't have enough of the repairs. He had to wear these again. And the spoiled kid's like. Is that a hole I see? And the spoiled kid goes over and, like, starts touching Jake's clothes. And Jake's like, stop. Like, bro, can you get off of me? And the spoiled kid's like, oh, Jake, I think I've seen you wear those clothes every single day. The spoiled kid says, I pride myself in the fact that I wear a new outfit, a fresh combination of clothes every single day. Jake, I just wish that you would put in the bare minimum effort. And Jake goes on to say, like, hey, like, bro, maybe, look, I, I, I just can't afford all those clothes. Uh, look, th- that's the difference between you and me. It's not that I'm not trying to put an effort, which if, is this really the important place to put your effort and your clothing combinations? But nevertheless, yeah, I, it's not that I'm not putting in the effort. It's that I just don't have the ability to do that. And the spoiled kid says, oh, so your parents don't work as hard as me. And the thing is, right, Jake did not like to hear this because his mom worked two jobs. You know, that's not what you want to hear. And she was the only one in the household who was making money. So Jake was not a fan of this at all. And Jake was like, like, dude, like, it is not a thing about how hard you work. And the spoiled kid's like, well, then why do your parents make less than mine? Hmm. And just so you guys know a little bit of context, in this class, 
there is something called like a star system. If you guys watch SpongeBob, think about like the buddy stars in Miss Puff Bowden class. It was the same deal. I bet the teacher liked SpongeBob and was inspired by it. Basically, when you did good things, you accumulated buddy stars, such as continuously turning in your stuff on time, being good in class, uh, I don't know, just doing good things. And if you did bad things, you lost them. And after a certain point of buddy stars, you got certain pri privileges, such as, I don't know, extended recess, uh, home, you can like choose not to do, there's some homeworks that were, you didn't have to do if you had enough buddy stars, stuff like that, right? And the thing was the spoiled kid was like just a little bit over the extended recess number of buddy stars. And all of a sudden, right, the teacher is starting, has been listening in, not all of a sudden, but throughout this conversation, the teacher who assigns and takes away the buddy stars has been listening to the spoiled kid berate this kid basically for, you know, not being in the same financial situation as him. And Jake goes on to say, like, bro, like, this isn't cool. Mind your own business. You know, I'm just going to go work on the thing. Because they were all assigned to work on some, like, arts and crafts project um, while they did, you know. And that's why the spoiled kid actually came over and started taunting Jake, because he had nothing better to do, because he finished his project. And the spoiled kid's like, oh, let me look over. Mm, 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 mm. Seems like a lack of talent from you. Why is that, you might ask? Well, I think it's because, well, I think it's because, you know, you're just not as good. Because, I, I don't know, there's other indications that make me feel that way. And Jake's like, what? Like, what do you have to say now? And this kid's like, well, I kind of think that, like, how rich you are is kind of, like, directly proportional to how good you are as a person, like how much value you have. I don't know if he said directly proportional, but you guys get what I mean. And Jake's like, bro, like that's insane and insensitive. And the spoiled kid's like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you look at my arts and crafts over there, it is just significantly better. And it was not significantly better. Maybe it was like a little better, I guess, right? I guess obje subjectively, it, one could say it was better. But, like, come on now, bro. Like, let's chill out for a second. But sure enough, the spoiled kid goes on to be like, you know, maybe you should have more respect for me. Maybe, Jake, you should have more respect for your financial elders. <laughs> Which, when I, when I got a DM about this, and because I got in quotes, financial elders, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. Because you always hear, like, older people or younger people saying this expression of, like, you got to respect your elders, like... They, and that's because, like, there's a lot of compound knowledge. They just happen to know a lot of from experience. In some cases, not everyone who's old is smart or knows a thing or two or is wise. But a lot of them are. But respect your financial elders. Basically, this spoiled kid took a actual saying that makes a lot of sense and I think is a good rule, of, is a good rule to live by. And just basically morphed it into his, like, crazy conception of if your parents make money, then you... Your descend, their descendant is a, a just is just immediately a fantastic person who is better than everyone else. And at this point, right, the teacher's heard enough. And he walks over, and he's like, spoiled kid. I've been listening to this conversation for the last 10 minutes. And you could see the look on the spoiled kid's face like, oh boy, I'm in trouble now. And the teacher's like, I just can't believe you truly believe these things. Like these are really offensive notions. And Jake is kind of sitting back with a little bit of a smirk on his face because he knows for a fact what is about to happen. And the spoiled kid also knows what is about to happen because whenever the teacher confronts someone saying something not very nice, he immediately goes to the buddy stars. And the spoiled kid's like, because the spoiled kid just went over the threshold for getting enough buddy stars um, to have extra recess. The spoiled kid's like, no, no, it's, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. I swear. I swear. Uh, it's not what you think. And the teacher's like, I'm sorry. I heard what I heard. And the teacher starts walking over to the buddy star system. And the spoiled kid turns over to Jake and is like, you did this. You did this. And you did this specifically because you hate me because I have more money than you. And Jake's like, dude, I didn't do anything. I just had a conversation with you. And he watched. They both turn around as the teacher doesn't take one buddy star off but takes three. And just for a little bit of context, to get over the, the, the allotted a number of buddy stars to be have extra recess, it was like four. So taking three away, so he had five before, he was now down to two. And getting buddy stars was super, super hard. And so at this point, like, Finn is like, or Jake is like, oh yeah, bro, like this is fire. Cause like, he thought he's gonna lose one buddy star, but he lost three, which is like weeks and weeks of effort. 
Anyways, that moral of the story is don't think you're better than someone else because of something that you can't control. And also don't think you're worse than someone else because of something you can't control. Or even things that you can control in a lot of cases. Anyways, let's go on to the next and final story. I wanted to call the last person uh, Princess Bubblegum because I was because <laughs> I was on the whole like Finn. J- you know what? You know what? Because I did Finn and Jake. I wanted to tell the call the last person Princess Bubblegum. But who's gonna stop me? Who's gonna stop me? No one. Not you. So I'm calling the last subscriber a uh, Princess Bubblegum, and you have to take it with a straight face. I'm doing this with a straight face. So Princess. B- oh no, I'm doing this straight face. Princess Bubblegum. You know. There was a spoiled kid in class. And this spoiled kid in class, basically... So Princess Bubblegum was new to the, you know, let's just say the seventh grade. I didn't really get a specific grade that she was in, but we're just going to say the seventh grade because judging by the rest of the story, it makes about sense there. So Bubblegum... Princess <laughs> Princess Bubblegum. This is the name I'm using. She's normal. So don't think of actual Princess Bubblegum. But Princess Bubblegum was new to uh, the seventh grade of a new high school. Her mom or dad recently ch- uh, changed jobs, so they had to live, go, move to a whole new place, and, you know, she was freshly enrolled in the new high school that happened to be in her new location. So anyways, right, you know, she's, you know, she's getting there, she walks in, and on the first day, you know, she sits down, she's nervous. I mean, who wouldn't be nervous, right? It, it, it's a nerve-wracking thing. And uh, she sits down, and uh, the teacher's like, hey, everyone, I'd like you to welcome... And says, hey, what's your name again? She said, Princess Bubblegum. I'd like you to welcome Princess Bubblegum to the class. Everyone's like, hey, hello, Princess Bubblegum. Welcome, right? And there's also a spoiled kid in this class. And we're going to call him Spoiled Kid. And the Spoiled Kid had, like, slick back hair. He wore sunglasses in class, even though his teachers told him many times, like, dude, can you not do that? That looks weird. And he's like, no, you can't stop me. And like, they got him in trouble a few times. But now he just like permanently wears like, I don't know, aviator sunglasses trying to be like, you know, the coolest dude ever. He's also got a super fancy watch on that he got for his like 13th birthday party or his 13th birthday from his parents, which I don't know about you, but I think I got like a Star Wars action figure, which it was fire. I'm sure I loved it. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I would have liked that a lot more than a watch, bro. But I'm just saying, who's dishing out a Rolex to some, like, 13-year-old kid? Anyways, though, this the spoiled kid's like, what, like, immediately, as soon as, like, the teacher wasn't, like, ha- like teaching class, like, there was some lull, or maybe they're like, oh, go and do some project or something. The spoiled kid imme- immediately sits next to Princess Bubblegum is like, what's good, baby? My name's Spoiled Kid. Obviously, you know, says his real name as... Princess Bubblegum's not her real name, but she's like, oh, hi there. My name's Princess Bubblegum. You know, I just moved into the, uh, to the town, and therefore, like, I'm starting high school here. I don't really know that many people. Like, how's it going? He's like, it's good. My day was okay, but then it was great when you, uh, when you blessed my presence. <laughs> and she's like, okay. Um, nice. Uh, a- anyways, though, you know, I- I'm excited to be here, and, uh, is there anything I should know before I move in? Like, I, I don't know. Is there like a, is there something I should know about the town or a good place to go? He's like, oh, baby, I know so many good places. You know, I know so many good places uh, that I could take you. You know, I gotta, you know, I got, you know, I can drive. And she's like, what? Because the, the thing is, right, you know, she, she really can't, he, he can't actually drive legally. I think he's like 15 or something. And she's like, wait, you can drive? He's like, well, I mean, not legally, but yeah, I do. Basically, dad just lets me, like, he's a leftover G-Wagon. He just lets me ride it around. So, babe, if you want to hop in my new whip, just just give me a call and I totally got you. And she's like, okay. At this point, uh, you know, Princess Bubblegum is starting to realize that, okay, maybe this guy has other intentions that I kind of didn't even realize at first. Like, uh, ha, <laughs> ha. Okay, let's try and back out of this respectfully. So then the spoiled kid goes on to say, So, baby, what are you doing tonight after school? I can definitely take you out on my new whip. At this point, the teacher starts to, like, overhear this conversation. And Princess Bubblegum is like, Well, you know, I should really be home with my parents. You know, they're, they're, we're, we're still unpacking, still getting acclimated. He's like, Okay, babe, so what about this weekend? Yo, how's that going for you? Baby doll. He just starts saying stuff like that. And she's like, well, um, well I, I don't know. This, you know, this, this weekend, I, don't, I, I just don't know if I should be going out. The spoiled kid's like, babe, you know 
that I got that bread, right? And she's like, um, sure, okay. He's like, babe, I don't know. I, I know you want me. I just don't totally get why you're just not going full in, why you're just not embracing my love like you should. And she's kind of just like, yo, what? At this point, the teacher started to be like, hey, bro. And sure enough, you know, Princess Bubblegum's like, hey, look, I appreciate the offer. I just don't want to be in any relationships this early. I just got to get to know people. I want to make some friends. I, you know, I'd love to be your friend. And not really, but like, I'd love to be your friend. Okay, she didn't say not really, but you know what I mean. She's like, you know, I'd love to be your friend, but I think I have to just start as that at a minimum. I can't rush into a relationship. And Spoiled Kid is like, gets really upset. And he's like, what? Dude, do, did you not hear me? I literally have a G-Wagon to ride around in. I have the fattest whip ever. Do you see the ice on my wrist? He, like, whips around his hand with this, like, Rolex on. He starts shaking it around. And he's like, like, I just don't get it. Like, why do you hate yourself? Because you obviously hate yourself if you don't want to go with me. Because, dude, I have a fat whip and drip on my wrist. And at this point, the teacher steps in. He's like, hey, spoil kid. Spoil kid's like, sup, teach. He's like, like, please don't like stop pressuring this like you, this young lady. She made it very clear that she's not into you. And just because, you know, you have a quote unquote nice whip, whatever the, the kids are calling cars now these days, and that you have a nice watch, doesn't mean that, you know, this lady's gonna like you. She's made it quite clear. And at this point, you're just making her uncomfortable. Teacher completely came out of the blue and just, boom, explosion, right in the spoiled kid's face, basically. And every single person turns around and looks at him. And spoiled kid's like, teach, I don't think you understand. She definitely is into me. So the teacher's like, all right, well, uh, Bubblegum, not to put you on the spot, but uh, are you? And, you know, Princess Bubblegum, a little annoyed by the spoiled kid, is like, no, I'm sorry. Spoiled kid's like, You'll regret this when I got an even hotter babe in my whip. And he goes to the back of the classroom. So after class, Princess Bubblegum is approached by a, a group of girls. And, you know, Bubblegum kind of knows, like, mean girls, yeah, I don't know, high school dynamics or middle school dynamics. She's just expecting to be bullied by these girls. But the girls come up and they say, I'm so sorry about Tyler back there. Let's call the spoiled kid Tyler. She's like, eh, it's okay, it's whatever. And they're like, no, it's not. You're new here, like, that's not okay for him to make you feel uncomfortable on the first day. You know what, girls, we've been talking about it, and we want you, Bubblegum, to hang out with us. Bubblegum's like, oh, like, thank you. And from that day on, you know, Bubblegum met her new group of friends. And Tyler, the spoiled kid, still, to this day, has, uns has unsuccessfully seduced any women with his fat whip. And his click on the video on screen right wrist. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of a spoiled kid that burns down the subscriber's house because he didn't get what he wanted. It's a crazy story. I know you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted this story Nick. So anyways, right, Nick was having his birthday party, and, you know, Nick was, like, wanting to invite all the people that he wanted to, and, uh, you know, he sent out the invitation, or he didn't send out the invitations, but he was sitting down with his mom, and they were going over who to invite. And Nick was like, oh, I want to invite this person, I want to invite Ben, I want to, like, you know, people like that. And then came up the name Spoiled Kid. His name wasn't actually Spoiled Kid, but he will be referred to as Spoiled Kid from here on out. And Nick didn't really like him. And it was for good reasons. I mean, this kid was a massive jerk. He was super entitled. He was never told no. And nobody really liked him in the class. However, Nick's mom was like, no, Nick, buddy, like, I really think you should invite him. I was hearing from his mom on Facebook that he's really struggling to make friends. And I think it'd be such a good opportunity for you guys to really get to know each other deep down and not this superficial at school stuff, but really start bonding and become friends. And Nick's like, no, mom, he's the worst. And she's like, ah, uh -uh. no, no, no. We can't be judging books by their covers. And Nick tries to explain to his mom, he's not judging a book by its cover. He literally knows this kid. Like, he's been doing stuff. He's been, like, in school with this kid for many, many years. This is not out of the blue. This kid has been a jerk for a very, very, very long time. Like, this is nothing new. And, like, no, absolutely not. 
But his mom actually, surprisingly to Nick, was very like, no, you're inviting this kid or I'm inviting him. And Nick's like, okay, fine. But like, remember, this is my birthday party. And if this kid ruins it, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not the one to blame here. And his mom's like, you know what? That's fine with me because you know what? You guys, by the end of it, are going to be such good friends that you're going to say, thank you, mom. You made the right call. Um, if you can't already tell by the title of this video, Nick would not go on to say, thank you, mom, you made the right call. And if he did, he did it very sarcastically. So anyways, the day of the birthday party arrives and Nick is like pretty excited because they have some activities planned. He's just kind of like waiting around for people to come and slowly but surely people start showing up. His friend Ben shows up, Steve, all these people, they all show up and Nick's having a really good time. And about, like, 30 minutes go by, and Spoiled Kid doesn't show up. So Nick is like, oh, looks like he's a no-show. That's just too bad. Nope. The door opens up, and the Spoiled Kid walks in. He's like, sup, guys. And everybody turns to Nick. They don't even turn to the Spoiled Kid. They turn to Nick because everybody doesn't like this kid for good reasons, right? And they all kind of look at him like, bro, what are you doing inviting this kid, bro? Like, what are you doing inviting him here? Why? <laughs> like, seriously, bro. Like, why did you invite him here? I, I just don't understand why he's here, man. Why would you do this to us, Nick? Why would you do this to us, man? So anyways, first activity was they're all going to play on the Xbox. And the idea was that, like, Nick had these multiplayer games, or these, not multiplayer, but they were single-player games on the Xbox. But the idea was, like, people would play, like, one mission or one campaign that was, like, 15, 20 minutes, or one chapter, whatever, and they would all sit around, you know, drinking some soda, talking with each other, and, like, one person would play this video game at a time, and they'd switch it around. So they walked downstairs, and, you know, it's kind of implied that Nick was going to go first, unless he said, I don't want to go first, because he's the birthday kid. He's the one with the birthday here. One would assume that he would be the one that would be allowed to go first, Right? That's not super crazy, correct? No, the spoiled kid is like, out of my way, guys, I'm going first. And everyone kind of looks around and is like, hey, bro, what, what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean you're going first? It's very obvious that, you know, you let the birthday boy choose. What's going on here, buddy? But anyways, uh, you know, Nick's like, okay, whatever, I'll just get some drinks. He's like, guys want drinks? The spoiled kid's like, yes. He's like, do you have any soda? And Nick's like, yeah, actually, I do. He said, good. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, my God, why is this kid here? So Ben goes up to Nick while they're getting, while Nick is getting soda from the fridge. And he's like, dude, why is this kid here? And Nick's like, bro, my mom forced me to invite him. Trust me. I'm not happy that he's here either. He sucks. He mega sucks. I know. Trust me. I don't want him here. Like, I want him here as much as you want him here. And, and he's like, is my mom forced me to invite him. We just got to like have fun even though he's here. So they go back and sit down and everyone's talking. They're actually having a pretty good time. And that's when about 15 minutes passes and, you know, the first campaign or whatever type, whatever metric in the video game that was pretty clear that you would pass it off to someone else happens. And the spoiled kid literally just starts up the next part and keeps playing. And Nick's like, bro, like, uh, do you want to want to pass that to one of the other boys? And he's like, no, nah, dude, I'm still gaming. Everyone kind of looks around. Nick's like, okay, well, at, at the next chapter or campaign or whatever, right, can you just uh, pass it over to one of the guys? Like, I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance. He's like, okay. And Nick's like, okay, well, whatever, that's fine. The spoiled kid agreed that he would pass it over when it was time. Sure enough, the time comes around, and Ben... He's like wanting to go next. He's like, hey, dude, can you pass it over? Like, it's been two campaigns. Spoiled Kid's like, bro, I'm in the middle of a game. Can you not interrupt my focus right now? And everyone kind of looks at... They don't even look at the Spoiled Kid. They all look at Nick. And they're just looking at him. And Nick knows everyone's like, bro, why is this kid here? So anyways, for the next two hours, because everyone showed up at 10 in the morning. It was an early start to the birthday party. For the next two hours, bro, they were just sitting around as a spoiled kid played Xbox and refused to let anyone on. And the conversation kind of died out because the idea was it's going to be a nice, cheery atmosphere. People were going to be joyful, having some like sodas, messing around, having a good time, passing the Xbox around. No, no. 
It was just a spoiled kid hogging up the entire thing. So anyways, it's, that's a little annoying, like no question about it. And for the rest of the day, the spoiled kid continues to do more and more annoying stuff. And let's fast forward to dinner because this is when things start to get interesting. So it's kind of the dinner is served like per person plates or whatever, but the dessert is buffet style. It, it, it just like the mom had a big like ice cream. The idea was it was going to be fun. It was going to be scoop your own ice cream. Here's all these condiments or whatever. I mean, not ketchup or you know what I mean. Like sprinkles, whipped cream, maraschino cherries. It's like a nice little assortment, right? That sounds fun. That's a fun birthday thing. But the spoiled kid, like you would have thought again, birthday boy goes up first, goes to the line, puts on whatever he wants. The spoiled kid grabs a bowl, literally takes like half the ice cream and then takes the box of sprinkles, dumps the entire box of sprinkles. Not like takes a little scoop, because he takes the spoon out of the box of sprinkles that was supposed to be used to like gently sprinkle the sprinkles on. No, he takes the spoon out and dumps the entire box of sprinkles on it, uses up like half the, like, the thing of whipped cream, and then takes a fistful of maraschino cherries. Bro reaches in with his fist and just basically contaminates the whole thing. Gets a big fistful of it and splats it on. And everybody, once again, they don't look at they don't look at the spoiled kid. They all turn and look at Nick and it's like, bro, what is this kid doing here, bro? Like I wh- wh- what is this kid doing here? And once again, Nick's like, guys, I'm sorry, this wasn't my call. So, anyways, uh next thing is, you know, tag, which is a kind of outdoors. They want it's like a little bit like an hour before light goes down and like the the, Nick's mom had this whole really cool thing where they had this penny system. And if someone pulled, like it was like Velcro penny or something. So it was like a Velcro, Velcro strap and they had these little two flaps or whatever. And you pulled on the flaps and if it un like, it's not just like normal tag, you need to pull on the Velcro thing that would unlatch and then you would be it. Right. So anyways, um, you know, uh, the, oh, well, sorry, Nick, I forgot his name. I'm doing this all in one take. So Nick was the birthday. He's not just the birthday boy. He was it. And he's like, all right, guys, 30 seconds. You can hide if you want to, you don't have to. Basically, if I grab your Velcro thing, you now become it with me. Right? So anyways, he counts to 30 and he immediately is like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going for the spoiled kid. I don't like this kid. He's going down with me. So anyways, he runs after him and the spoiled kid was always told that he was just a, a Greek god and he never needed to exercise. So he was not the fastest man on planet Earth, to say the least. He's not the most agile man. So immediately, right, you know, uh, Nick goes up, rips down his penny and gets him. He's like, all right, man, so you're it with me. Spoiled kid literally snatches the thing out of Nick's hand, reattaches it and says, nah, you didn't get me and runs off. And Nick is like, you little... Mm. So he runs, so Nick goes around, gets some other people it. He gets Ben and he gets Steve, his two friends. He's like, boys, we need to corner the spoiled kid and get him. He already cheated and reattached his thing. So the three of them, they all run after the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid's like, no, and he kind of waddles away. And they bow and they get both of his pennies because they were like two flaps or whatever. And the spoiled kid's like, give them back, give them back. And it, 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 he, he kind of makes this like scene. It makes a spectacle because everyone's kind of watching as the spoiled kid is like, you're cheating, you're cheating, give it back, give it back, give it back. He starts like grabbing and fisting and clawing. And he actually is like claws with his long fingernails and scratches Ben. Ben's like, ow, and he drops the penny. Spoiled kid grabs it, puts it on, says, you guys didn't get me, and runs away. At this point, right, you know, Nick's like turns to them. He's like, yo, you know what? We're going to ignore this kid. We're just going to say he quote unquote won and move on. So anyways, Nick goes and like tags everyone else, totally normal. And everyone's caught except the spoiled kid wasn't caught because he cheated twice, right? The spoiled kid's like, I win. I'm the winner of tag. (laughs) And they're all like, okay, bro. Good for you, buddy. You're a big winner. You're a big winner, bro. Huge W's for you, buddy. Congrats. You're the greatest. Everyone hates this kid even more at this point. So anyways, now it is time for a movie. They're going to spend two hours watching a movie. And the thing is, you would assume that the birthday boy would be able to choose the movie. But no. 
Real quick comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. I just like seeing the names and faces of people who made it this far and uh, help support the channel by watching at least this far. I'm going to try and hard as many comments as I possibly can. And also, if you want to support the channel even more than you already have by watching this far into the video, consider maybe after this video or later just sitting down and watching a bunch of videos in a row. Um, and I'm actually really curious. What do you guys do when you watch a bunch of videos in the row? Do you like let them play and you're playing a video game, cleaning your room? Do these videos help you go to bed? Let me know in the comment section down below. And finally, if you want to submit a story like this, go to my Instagram at Connor Pugs and DM me there. But also, everyone there can follow me. I post photos and stuff. I would really appreciate it. It's Connor Pugs. It's in the description. And also, if you haven't already, drop a like in the video. Let's get back to the story as the spoiled kid gets worse and worse and worse until, as you can tell by the title, it gets really, really bad. So anyways, right, the spoiled kids, they all go down to like a little kind of uh, the, the, the television room where there's a TV, there's a couch set up, the lights are turned off, so it's kind of like a mock movie theater in a sense. And the spoiled kid is like, I want to watch Iron Man. And at this point, right, you know, Nick didn't want to watch Iron Man. He saw Iron Man a couple days ago with his dad. So he's like, actually, I just recently watched that. I want to, I want to watch, I don't know, Avengers or something. And the spoiled kid's like, but I don't want to watch Avengers. And at this point, Ben, Nick's friend, is like, dude, it doesn't matter. You're not the birthday kid. Like, it's Nick's birthday. He chooses. And at this point, the spoiled kid grabs Nick's laptop, which they were going to play the movie on because it was connected to, connected to the TV, and said, if you guys don't let me watch Iron Man, I'm going to break this laptop. And Nick is like, bro, like, I can't afford a new laptop. And the, the spoiled kid is like, that's too bad for you, buddy. If we're watching Avengers, I'm breaking the laptop, and you're never going to use it ever again. At this point, everyone's like, bro, put that thing down. Put it down. And Nick is like, fine. We'll watch Iron Man. That's okay, buddy. That's okay. The spoiled kid's like, yeah, nice. I get to watch Iron Man. And he puts it on. He logs in. He's like, what's your login? And Nick's like, I'll just put it in. He's like, no, give me your password. Nick's like, I'm not going to give you my password. At this point, the spoiled kid lifts the computer above his head and is in the motion of about to smash it. Because remember, spoiled kid doesn't understand the value of money. The spoiled kid gets whatever he wants whenever he wants, and he has infinite resources. So he thinks that smashing a computer is a minor inconvenience. He doesn't realize that that is like life ruining for some people, you know? And Nick's like, fine, my password is whatever he says. And the spoiled kid's like, that's a trash password. I'm going to hack you now. Logs in, turns on Iron Man. They're all sitting there. And the spoiled kid is literally sitting with the laptop. So if anyone tries to change it, he would go and he'd just throw the laptop into the wall or something. Very bad situation. So anyways, while this is happening, Ben leans over to Nick and is like, dude, this guy freaking sucks. And, you know, at this point they're like, yeah, I know. We're going to bed soon. We're going to have, like, cake tomorrow and be done. Like, this is the worst thing ever. I can't wait to tell my mom about how wrong she is. So they all go upstairs, and it's time for the sleepover, right? Once again, one would think that the birthday boy would be able to sleep in his bed, and everyone else who brought sleeping bags would sleep in the sleeping bags. But no, immediately as they go into the room, the spoiled kid jumps into, the, uh, into uh, Nick's bed and kind of makes himself comfortable. And Nick's like, bro, I'm sleeping in the bed. And the spoiled kid literally hisses at him. And Nick is like, turns to Ben. And he's like, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with this. So he goes down. Nick gets his sleeping bag that he brings to other people's house. And he sleeps on the floor. And Ben, once again, because they're brushing their teeth, Ben's like, dude, like, as much as I'm saying, like, this is ridiculous that he came, like, I'm just sorry for you, bro. This is your birthday party. It's being ruined by this kid. I'm just sorry for you. And Nick's like, I'm sorry for me too, bro. Like, this sucks. So anyways, they go to sleep, and they wake up, and the spoiled kid is sleeping in. And so Nick and Ben decide to have a little bit of a prank, and they slam the door super loud when they're closing it. And they hear a scream, be quiet, like I'm trying to sleep. And that's when, you know, Nick's mom says, cake time, boys. 
And that's when they see the door slam open with the spoiled kid waddling towards them. And they're like, oh my God, of course this kid would yell at us that he needs to sleep. But as soon as he hears cake, he's like, oh, cake, I need some cake. So anyways, they're all walking downstairs and they get down to the, uh, they get down to the kitchen. And there's a cake with a bunch of candles for the number of years of how old Nick is, right? And at this point, they're like, you know, they gather around the table and, you know, Nick's mom is like, happy birthday. He's like, guys, guys, join in, join in. Everyone starts singing happy birthday to, but the only kid, can you guys guess which kid was not singing happy birthday to Nick this day? Oh, take a wild guess, guys. Take a wild freaking guess. Oh, did you say the spoiled kid? Yeah, you're right. But it gets worse. So they're like, they end the happy birthday song and Nick's mom's like, all right, Nick, blow out the candles, make a wish. And Nick is like, <gasps> kind of inhales. And that's when the spoiled kid goes, <sighs> blows out every single candle. Says, I took your wish. <laughs> and at this point, like Nick's mom's like, oh, okay, uh, I'll get the cake cutter. Cause she's like not trying to like cause a scene. And everyone's like, dude, why did you blow out Nick's candles? And the spoiled kid's like, well, I just felt like I deserved to blow it out. And they're like, dude, what? So anyways, right, they cut the cake up. The spoiled kid, like, takes, like, half the cake or whatever. But, you know, that's nothing new. That's nothing unexpected. And that's when it's time to open the presents. So anyways, right, you know, Nick's mom's like, all right, Nick, time to open the presents. And she hands the present to Nick. But in between handing the present to Nick, the spoiled kid intercepts and grabs it, but doesn't like rip it out of the hands. It's just like Nick's hand is on the present, Nick's mom's hand is on the presents, and the spoiled kid Grubby's paws are on the present as well. He's like, I want to open it for Nick. And, you know, Nick's mom's like, no, like Nick's going to open this present. The spoiled kid's like, but I want to. And she's like, well, you can at your own birthday party. Like Nick's mom was kind of putting her foot down here, which kind of respect, but also respect taken back for allowing this kid at the party in the first place. But whatever, that's, that's in the past, man. So anyways, you know, Nick's mom kind of puts her foot down and is like, no, dude, like my son is opening his own birthday presents. I'm not allowing you to come in here and take that away from him. So the spoiled kid, remember, this is the first time in a long time the spoiled kid has been told no. So he sits down, he crosses his arms, and his face gets red like a tomato. He is very, very angry. And that's when he storms off to the kitchen. And Nick and Nick's mom kind of look at each other like, do we have to deal with this? In the middle of Nick having some good time with his friends, opening up the presents that they gave him to say, you know, thank you, like, you've been a good friend, happy birthday, bro. But nope, that time had to be ruined slash interrupted because sure enough, the spoiled kid, oh yes, the spoiled kid is having a tantrum. And that's when Nick's mom is like, what do I smell? And Nick's like, are, are you cooking something, mom? Like, did you forget, did you leave something in the oven? She's like, no, I'm not cooking anything. And that's when they both run into the kitchen as well as a few other guys. And they see two curtains, like the two drapes for like a window, completely on fire. And they see the spoiled kid with a box of matches trying to set the napkins on fire as well. So immediately the spoiled kid, the spoiled kid is like, you should have let me open the presents. Now you pay the price. He's setting the whole place on fire, right? So at this point, like, Nick is like, oh my God, and goes over, basically tackles the spoiled kid, and spoiled kid's like, oh, Nick hurt me. Nick's mom, punish him now. Nick's mom's not ignoring this kid, right? She's trying to put out the fire. It's spreading, and she's like, all right, calls 911, gets the fire, like, says, like, we have a fire in the house. We need people to come over. She then turns around, turns all the kids, and says, all you kids need to get out of this house immediately. They all file out. They, like, kind of count to make sure everyone is there. And the spoiled kid is sitting on the ground and is like, ow, Nick hurt me. I'm feeling all ouchy. And all the kids are completely ignoring him because they're like, nope, nope, we don't care. We hope that you fracture every bone in your little body. We do not care. So anyways, fire department comes and they go in there. And thankfully, the entire house is not burned down to a crisp. However, the entire kitchen is completely destroyed and a little bit of the living room as well. The fire was spreading and the kid basically burned down this kid's house. Not to the ground, but there was a ton of damage, right? So anyways, after the fire department talks with, you know, Nick's mom, 
Nick's mom like calls all the parents, explains what happens, and then also calls up the spoiled mom's parents or the spoiled kid's mom and explains in great detail what just happened. So anyways, all the cars come up. They're all like going over to Nick's mom said, I'm so sorry about what happened. And then the parent gives like a little side eye to the spoiled kid who's like, what? I wasn't able to open the present. So I did a little damage. Oopsies. This kid isn't getting like what he just did, right? He doesn't understand what just happened. So anyways, eventually the spoiled kid's mom arrives and she walks up and she is so angry. And she comes over to like Nick's mom and is like, I'm so sorry. Like, here's my number. Here's my email. Send me a bill for the damages. I will pay it in full. I do not care. I'm not even a check. Charge me whatever you need for it. And then she goes over and she's like, spoiled kid, middle name, last name. Uh, insert a first middle and last name. You know when your parents call you or, you know, when someone's parents call them by their first middle and last name, it's over, bro. Might as well just pack up and you got to run away from home at that point because you're in big trouble, dude. If they whip out the middle name, oh my God, you're, it's done for you. I'm not trying to be, you know, a downer here. It's done for you. So the spoiled kid's like, Mom, Nick hurt me. I got boo-boos on. In the middle of saying that, he's pulled up by the scruff of his neck. And she's like, look here, you. And he's like, oh, Mom, what happened? But they didn't let me open the presents. She's like, I don't care. And she's like dragging this kid away. And he's like, but Mom, all I did was do a little oopsie in the kitchen. <laughs> a little oopsie in the kitchen. Because they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't let me open the presents. And then Nick, yeah, the big bad boy, he jumped on top of me while I was doing the oopsie and it hurts. And she's like, I don't care. Like, you are going to have a conversation with me and your father. And he's like, no, but you don't understand my point of view in this whole thing. <laughs> no. And he's like dragged away. At this point, Nick and his mom are standing there and they're just watching parents come, give their condolences for the house and pick up their kids. And Nick turns to his mom. She's like, Nick, I know what you're going to say. And Nick's like, mom, you know, I have to say it. And Nick's mom's like, okay, you know what? Fine. Nick's like, told you so. <laughs> she's like, you know what? Okay, I deserve that. That's fine. And she's like, Nick, what happened today? Like, seriously, what happened? Like, I need to know. And Nick's like, mom, it was the craziest last 24 hours I've ever had. This kid's the worst up until what just happened that you saw. Let me tell click you Click on the video on screen it. right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.